Welcome to Living 4D with Paul Check. Today's guest is Shervin Jafarea. Shervin has devoted his life to helping people achieve optimal health, and his philosophy is that the key to wellness and disease prevention is through complete homeostasis, which is only achieved through the full understanding of one's mental, physical, and spiritual health. Shervin created the company and the product Symbiotica to bring these ancient concepts back to the modern world. Stay tuned to the end of the podcast for a special offer from Symbiotica. Hi, everybody. Today, we get to enjoy my second podcast with Shervin Jaferia, founder of Symbiotica, one of our cherished Living 4D sponsors. Shervin has devoted his life to the study of nature, biochemistry, nutrition, the teachings of Rudolf Steiner, alchemy, plant medicines, the mystics, and the mysteries of life. Whenever Shervin and I get together, we always get deep into the things that really matter, things that make for body, mind, well-being, and the study and practice of deep spirituality. In this podcast, Shervin and I dialogue on navigating through this modern world and why our health should be at the apex of our priority, living a life of intention and purpose as inspiration and motivation to manage the alchemy of life, overcoming scarcity mentality and poverty consciousness the pros and cons of social media and new age internet, how the system is breeding lower states of consciousness into the hearts of men, jealousy, envy, negative body impression due to photo manipulation, and feeling insecure about one's body, the importance of brotherhood and sisterhood, and the importance of maintaining real person-to-person relationships, opiates, drugs, and numbing versus getting clear and engaging one's truth. We finish with life as a shamanic journey, and Shervin's near-death experiences, which include two rattlesnake bites. I hope you enjoy my conversation with Shervin Jaferia as much as I did. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Living 4D with Paul Check. Today, I have Shervin Jaferia, the founder of Symbiotica, back for round two. My buddy, how you doing, Shervin? I'm doing amazing. It's so good to be here. Yeah, it's lovely to have you back at the Rainbow. You get to come back and visit all your plants that you gave us. Yeah, that was uh, powerful, driving up and seeing that Wachuma standing strong right in the middle of the driveway. Yeah. You know, I've prayed to that cactus so many times, and to see it here at, as the fixture in front of your home, protecting, yeah. ground. I mean, that's the plan of the Andes. That's yeah, just, baby. Thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I got, you know, I put uh, a whole bunch of them that you gave me up by the helicopter pad. You went and saw them, right? I just went up there with Mana. We did a little stroll there. We played with them. We talked about them. We prayed to them. They are, you know, they're up there. They're surviving. They're going yeah, for it. Yeah, they, they got pretty small during the heat because there's no water up there. So I had Freddie take a bunch of water up to them. But uh, with the rain, they'll perk right back up. I think what it was is they were sitting on a slope, a southwest slope for the last three years Mm -hmm. at the sanctuary. And they're getting probably a third of the amount of sun. So they're just adjusting. You know, those, they're, those, they're, they're yeah. actually getting sun all day up there. No, so. up up there, they're getting a lot yeah. of sun. Oh, yes. They were I used see. to getting a third of the oh, sun. Oh, I see what yeah. you're saying. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. I chose that spot because it's really got sun. Because the sun's rising right over there in the east and it sets right over there. So they're getting sun all day long up yeah. there. I chose that spot just for them. They'll acclimate. You know, that mescaline is uh, is powerful. Yeah, man. We're, we're, we got, by the way, the Wachumas San Pedro cactus, should you dare to eat it, it has mescaline in it, which is a great way to uh, see more of reality than you're used to. <laughs> Absolutely. I love it. Ground, grounding superpowers. That's how you stroll the tips of Wainu Pichu and Machu Pichu. That's what, that's, I mean, that's what they're eating. You yeah, know? and uh, it's alkalizing too. So it's just, it's also yeah. very very good for the male yeah. oh, sex drive. Yeah, it yeah. Uh, Burl. turns you into a cactus without the thorns. <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> yeah. It's uh, I've done a lot of uh, San Pedro in my career, and it's uh, it's a good long ceremony. That it's about eleven hours, eleven or oh, actually twenty hours before you really can sleep again. That I've I've found at least the way I do it. Yeah, there's no sleeping for about a day and a half. Yeah, and. You know, it's the, you know, you got the ayahuasca, the grandmother, that's mm. the grandfather. Yeah. You know, come here, come here, sit on my lap. And, and let me just tell you a story and tell you everything's going to be all right mm. while my face keeps changing colors and dimensions. <laughs> Shapes, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. So it's a, it's, it's a beautiful medicine. It's a beautiful daytime ceremony and it's good mm-hmm. to be around your loved ones on that one. It's great for, for me, for art too. It really brings color very vivid, very vivid and alive and really enhances my clairvoyance i can it's just like i'm on full <laughs> x-ray vision all the time that's fantastic it is well uh you know we've had uh 
we had a nice conversation last time and, you know, all sorts of things are going on in the world. So we, we're going to talk about a few things today and just share some love with the world. And our first sort of point of dialogue here is navigating through this modern world and why our health should be at the apex of our priority. You know, the whole pandemic thing really put a lot of people into, you know, sort of a jail. And uh, a lot of people um, <laughs> with with their own agreement stayed inside and bi- domestic violence went through the roof. Suicides went through the roof. and Obesity. Obesity. People just got, you know, they had too much time to do what they normally didn't have as much time to do because maybe they were working or... Alcohol sales went through the roof. I yeah. mean, March, April was the records for alcohol sales. It's interesting that during um, all the world wars, the last two world wars, and during the um, uh, big stock market crash in the... Tw- 20- 1929. 1929. Yeah. Three things that did not drop in sales were um, coffee tobacco, and sugar. (laughs) That's interesting. So those things have been shown to be capable of sustaining any environmental crisis as far as not dropping in sales. So it shows you what people use as adaptogens. I mean, the tobacco, I can understand, but what they were buying was crap tobacco. That's that's, poison. Yeah, that's not tobacco. No, that's just 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 the, the destruction of a plant. GMO, no soil, pesticide laden, and poison filled nicotine drivers going directly into the bone marrow altering everything in the human body yes and most people don't know this but research shows that the average commercially sold cigarette is eight percent sugar so when you smoke it you're actually mainlining white pure processed sugar and what does that do to your pancreas insulin receptors well it gets you very addicted absolutely we're you know as bad as nicotine so the you know it's a dopamine hit right so you're just basically getting that yeah, spike you're getting it. Yeah, it could be. I haven't studied the chemical pathways of, of it. And if I did, I forgot. I forgot more than I can remember. I don't try so hard to remember all the technical details anymore because I found after 59 years of life that what's important sticks. Yeah, I agree. And I think you're doing a good job. I, I wanted to commend you on your broad spectrum analysis on how everything, all these governing dynamics and all these things that are happening around us, the problem, reaction, solutions, how you're flowing with it. Mm-hmm. And the inter- and the interviews that you've been doing leading up to this one, um, you've been getting very technical and very very detailed. And I think what we wanted to do today um, is, you know, ev- everyone's been messaging me saying, "Hey, when are you going to get back on Paul Check? We just want to hear you guys conversate about life. You know? <laughs> yeah. What do you guys do every day? What is your perspective? You know, and just kind of share that magic. And that's you know, we are a product of the the things that we love and the people that we're around. And we all know we're the the sum of the five people that we're the closest to, you know, and that doesn't have to be physically co- closest to. That could be just an inherent bond through our spiritual connections and through our heart resonance. And that makes it me and Mana and Zoe and Angie and Penny and the nanny. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> and on, on Freddie, a, yeah. my, my handyman and gardener. Who's one of the nicest guys I've he's ever met. He's the coolest yeah. cat, man. Yeah, yeah. I think I think he's got Mayan Mexican blood in him. I felt that strength, that Mayan. Yeah, he's yeah, just yeah. Fr- he's strength embodied, that guy. He's <laughs> he's unbelievable. I've been out there working with him on hundred plus degree days and he just he, keeps going. He just keeps going like it's nothing, man. It's amazing. And and he's stoked to do it. Yeah, he's right. He loves the earth. He loves trees. He loves plants. He loves stones. He he loves building. He, he's just like got so many talents. It's when you hang out with a guy like that. That's that's someone you want to be around when when things get tough because he knows how to survive. You know. Yeah, and that's I think that's what we've lost. Yeah, we and have I, lost yeah. that. And and this. You know this worldwide amnesia of what's important. You know who we are, what are, wh- why are we carnated here. You know what our purpose is here, and yeah. I, I find that to be the missing link today is that so many people are running around without purpose, without mm-hmm. intention. They don't have intention, not even on their breath, right? Yeah. Just just something that we take for granted so much. Just our breath. They don't. They're not even in their body to to understand what the breath is mm-hmm. let alone looking at world issues and the dynamics of a modern mechanistic life 
So, you know, making things simple, going back to the basics, putting our feet into the earth, mm -hmm. touching the trees, mm -hmm. hugging our children, staying off the mainstream television, television, mm -hmm. and just loving more and developing real empathy. I think that's the root of us being able to stay strong as a humanity. I think also, too, is, you know, human beings are incredibly social creatures. And the whole sort of brainwashing of the public with uh, cell phones and media and, and Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and all these different mediums has led up to a lot of, of um, what looks like connection but is actually statistically proving to have the opposite effect. I don't know. Have you seen the documentary Social Dilemma on Netflix? I have, yeah. Uh, see, that's a great documentary. And the thing that I loved about it is they're interviewing the guys that invented these technologies, and they're saying they won't even let their kids use any social media yeah, at they, all. <laughs> and you could feel their visceral responses. They were in regret. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, because they, they know what it's doing to the fabric of this generation and of the culture yeah. worldwide. Yeah, absolutely. It's just it's just breaking culture down. It's turning everybody, you know, it's like usually if you put if I take a bunch of uh let's say I take something that'll drop water. If you drop a bunch of droplets on a glass plate, you get to a certain point and all of a sudden they congeal together into a puddle. You ever seen that? Happen? I have, of right? course. Yeah. So the, the centripetal a, force. Well, it's a centripetal right. force, but you could there's a lot of forces involved. But um the point is is that that's how human beings naturally function and when we're mostly water, right? So what's happening is the opposite. It's like we've we're naturally inclined to puddle together, to 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 congregate, to discuss, to dialogue, to explore. To belong. To, to belong. But all the social media stuff is actually causing the congregation factor, the puddle, to disperse. But it creates the illusion of connection. And the problem is that the connection through those mediums doesn't require any accountability. So you can tell someone they're a dickhead or whatever, and they're not going to slap you in the face or, or you know, a, uh, go, you know, challenge you. So yeah, what, there, there's no causality. There's no responsibility. Right. That's the studio gangster. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's term. a good way to call it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a lot of those. Absolutely. Yeah, and it, so so it's actually leading to people having a sense, an intel intellectual sense of connection, but a heartfelt sense of disconnection. Absolutely. And you know, for me personally, I. The, the only social media I use is Instagram, and I was able to operate in a pretty good flow with it because you're posting photos, and that's it. You're not getting into weaving, weaving conversations, and I certainly don't go on the explore tab, you know, where you can go and just see everything that's going oh, on. Oh, that'll that's, that's like a sea. A sea of stuff, and I, I mentioned this in the last podcast I did, I think, with your buddy Kyle Kingsbury. Uh -huh. I, I, you know, I said, there's kids that are 12 years young. And within a span of 10 minutes, they're seeing a thousand different realities all flash in front of their eyes, yeah. which is so much more than just looking at something on a phone. That's that's magic and energy that's going into the system. Let yeah. me take a puff of this uh, beautiful herbal tobacco one second. Yeah, please do. We're in my library, which I don't have heating in so it's a bit like a refrigerator right now because it's been pretty chilly up here and rainy it is cold here but it's getting my juices flowing we know we, we love the cold so so these you know people are just examining and experiencing all these different realities in a span of 10 15 20 minutes 30 minutes hour whatever it is and it takes them completely out of who they are where they are and what they're doing in this life yeah. and they're comparing their position with all of these fabricated stories all of these images, you know, we're talking about something that's been discussed a lot over the waves of the last several years and yeah. problems with social media. And I, I think it's, you know, because of what we're dealing with today in terms of uh, the pandemic, or I have other words for it, but I won't say it. Um, you know, that's not that that's feeding right into that, which totally. is the fear, which is the illusion, which is the disenfranchisement of being your own sovereign self, and that's a key fundamental that has been stripped away from humanity. And we are letting an energy outside of us hold dominion on us. Yeah. And I, I use that word dominion very specifically because 
who's operating you every day? Who's operating your emotions? When you rise every day, who's operating your thoughts? How are you conversating and creating energies around you? Is it through an energy outside of you or is it coming from you? You know, And we can go back to children. We can go back to how they were raised. And What are you driven by really is what it boils down to. In other words, you know, Joseph Campbell says, if you want to find out who your God is, ask yourself what you cannot do without for two or three days. And like they showed in Social Dilemma, the mother challenged the kid to a week off his phone and he didn't make it. You remember that part? Yes, I did. And then when the daughter- she Struggled. The, she put the daughter's phone in a cookie jar and she smashed the cookie jar because it was a locking cookie jar. So she just destroyed it in 10 minutes because she couldn't live without her phone. It's a new drug. It's, so, it's a, you know, it's, it is a drug, yeah, right? Yeah. And so what's happening is people are actually turning their phone into God and it's directing their lives. But there's a deep and profound reality that people aren't aware of. And I wouldn't expect them to because you have to do a fair bit of deep study to come across this kind of information. Did do you feel like this is a form of AI? Because you know, we've been fed these movies like UFO movies and then, you know, James Cameron and his movies and all that kind of stuff where we have an artificial intelligence that takes over, Skynet comes in and reboots the system and all of a sudden humanity is up against the machine world and ultimately we're becoming cyborgs, right? And we're bec- we're going into that type of energy. I think a phone and the and the the amount of time and the amount of energy and the amount of thoughts that are coming through that device yeah. it's manipulating us and it, it, it just the basics i mean we're not remembering phone numbers anymore we're not navigating i know people yeah. who don't even know how to tell time unless they have a digital phone and they can't even read an analog clock and we and can you imagine what that's removing from that person's faculties yeah. and, and self development especially as a child and there's no wonder why kids don't you know, aren't helping the elderly walk across the street anymore, or they're not feeling emotions anymore because they're lacking those governing faculties that develop an ecosystem of balance and homeostasis where they feel and there's no more feeling. Yeah. You see, there is feeling, but the feeling is almost always based on whether or not you're getting enough likes on the photo you posted or you're getting the social reinforcement. And one of the things that, I mean, the, the, what was the suicide rate under 13 or 14 year, year olds? It was 159% since social media went live. 159 increase, percent increase in suicides in people under, I think, 13 or 14, and something like 59% increase in suicides in people. It's probably above higher. That. It's probably, probably high. Yeah. As most of you listening to my podcast are aware, food can heal you, energize you, support your immune system, enhance sleep quality, or it can disintegrate you, stop you from sleeping and feeling well, poison you, and be the basis from which diseases emerge. In her excellent book, Oneness vs. the 1%, Vandana Shiva suggests that 50% of the greenhouse gas emissions result from commercial farming and like many of the great authors I've studied, warns of the worldwide dangers to the planet and all of us created by commercial farming, excessive use of dangerous chemicals that have serious consequences for our health, the health of nature, and the planet as a whole. We are living in a time when government is no longer an organization for the people, by the people, but is a corporate headquarters from which the super-rich people of the world use money to bend laws remove laws that protect us in nature, and implement policies and practices that fill their pockets with money while at once diminishing our health, freedom, and destroying nature. The only vote we really have in a corporatocracy is how we spend our money. If we don't feed dangerous corporations, they die out or start conforming to our needs as informed consumers. That's why I'm a big fan of Organifi. Organifi uses certified organic ingredients in all their products, which range from superfood drinks to high-quality protein powders, to supplements that support joint, gut, and immune health. My family and I love Organifi's products and use them every day, and I know you will love the taste, quality, and ease of use. Take a few minutes to head over to Organifi.com, that's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com, and vote for the planet each day by buying real food from real farmers that support the earth and all of us. On checkout, use your Living4D discount code, capital C, 
capital H, capital E, capital K, 20. That's check 20 in all caps to get your 20% discount on any of their amazing products. Enjoy Organifi. But the point I was getting to, and this is what a lot of people don't realize, and, and the other thing before I get to that is that, you know, they were talking to the guys that actually engineered these technologies on Social Dilemma, right to the guy that taught them how to do it, the, the East Indian guy. And they made it very clear that the technology they're using goes past your cognitive system and goes into your basic um, so unconscious. And, and they even use the words, it goes deeper into your brainstem. It's, go, it's going into your reptilian drives. And the reptilian drives are, am I safe? And if I'm safe, then it's time to get food. And if I'm safe and I have food, then it's time to procreate. So our brain stem, our reptilian brain, which is our brain stem and spinal cord, based on Paul McLean's research, um, for those of you that are interested, look up Paul McLean and the triune mind. It's, he did 25 plus years of research as a neuroscientist, and it shows how the brain's constructed very beautifully. But those reptilian drives are our survival drives. So we're supposed to get up and the first thing we're supposed to do now, this is like when we're living in, a, in, a, in the environment of nature, is check to see if there's anything around that might kill you. And then you're also concerned, is there anything taking food from you, right? So Native Americans would mark out their hunting territories. And if you cross those lines, it was <laughs> battlegrounds, right? So these are fund fundamental aspects these of are, being human. These are yeah. biological yeah. drives. These are right. instincts. These right. are things that are alive in your psyche, whether you're even conscious of it or not. It's almost autonomic. It is autonomic. Yeah. It's it's a survival drive, right. right? It's the instincts of nature. It's how nature perpetuates itself. So first you check to see if you're safe. Well, what does that mean today? It means, do I have enough money to pay the bills? Right. Right? That's right. what it means. Right. So instead of hunting for deer or buffalo or elk or a wild pig you go out and hunt for a job and and you know you put your effort in to bring home the bacon that's yeah, uh, what that saying means abun right? abundance abundance yeah, creating yeah. creating stability and abundance and then the next thing you do is you eat so once you've determined that you're safe and you go get some food then you prepare the food and once you have food and you prepare food then you think about procreating. But today we've got it actually turned completely upside down. Most people, if they're young, younger, wake up, have sex, then they eat junk that's not even real food, and then they go out and struggle with their existence because they're caught in a consumerist, capitalistic um, myth that basically is programmed through the very devices we're talking about. Anytime you don't feel good, you just buy something that'll make you feel good. New shoes, new car, new clothes, jewelry, whatever, right? The, the laws of gratification. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Instant gratification. So what's happened is we've actually turned our survival drives upside down. People think about sex and food and drugs and alcohol before they think about hunting and whether they're safe. And because they're so distracted, they don't even know what safety is anymore. And one of the really profound things that was shared in the Social Dilemma documentary on Netflix was one of the statements that one of the guys made. He said, the problem is there is so much false information and- um, Smoke and mirrors. Smoke and mirrors yeah. that nobody knows what the truth. And he said, not even Google or Facebook knows what the truth is. Right. Nobody knows what's true. And the point that he was making, which is critical, is that we have gotten so far from the earth, from protecting our water supply, protecting nature itself that feeds us, that gives us the resources to make all these phones and computers and cars and houses and clothes. We've gotten so far away from breathing and moving and sleeping properly and having a normal sleep cycle we've gotten so far away from doing things for ourselves to create happiness right what do most people do they watch something they live vicariously but they forget life is a participation sport 
So the point that and, and what happens when the population is not operating with those faculties, is not operating with that mindset, and here we go, la la, 2020. What happens is we have a crippling system. We have an e- economy that's based on gratification. And you get sucked into not realizing that what you call government is really a headquarters for the very corporations that are creating the illusions that you're buying into. And you get caught into issues of racism. You get caught up in a uh, (laughs) whatever you want to call it, a medical catastrophe. And you don't actually realize that most of what you're being told is bogus information designed to get you to respond exactly how they want you to respond. It's classic brainwashing right down the pipe. Absolutely. Anybody that studied it can see it. And so the point I'm driving at is people don't know how to create stability for themselves, how to trust themselves, and they don't know what real information versus unreal information is. So they they believe anything that's got a PhD behind it or it comes from a scientist or something like that. Because well, it's safe, right? Well, it's, when not, you're, well, it's we, not safe. Well, it's, it's technically not safe. No. But it's safe for the mind that's been disenfranchised and has been crippled and is falling apart because of everything that you just said, fear, indoctrination, and a food um, diet that is completely filled with everything the body cannot rehabilitate itself with. So there's absolutely no rejuvenation going on at all from mind to toe. All of those things that you're talking about is driving an energy of confusion and distortment. And then we go into scarcity mentality, poverty conscious, and all these different aspects that the human is doing today and fearing the next person. What what are you going to steal from me? It's this competition stuff. All of this are uh, you know reactions to the missing the nucleus of being human. I'll point out what I mean when I say it's not safe. Anybody listening that's got a child, I want to ask you a question. If your child is in front of a computer or an iPhone or a television or playing a video game and you're a parent and you try to ask that child what it would like to eat or to get its attention, what happens? Nothing. Why? Because the kid's in a hypnotic trance. The technology puts you into a hypnotic trance, which makes you highly programmable. You're easy to plant seeds of action in. You're easy to plant urges and drives and desires. And you're in an unconscious state. That's what's happening. You're actually going into an unconscious, almost a semi-sleep state, halfway between sleeping and waking. And for the rest of us that may not have kids, after a hard day of work, I like to come home and watch something on television myself, like Gaia TV or a documentary, or, or sometimes I even like just to watch a good shoot 'em up if I can find one with a decent story, which isn't always easy to do. But why? Because I've been using my mind all day very intensely, and I want something mindless. So the point I'm making is I turn to- So the, you earned your stripes to I, get there. <laughs> yeah, I earned my- <laughs> time in mindfulness right. to go into mindlessness. But the point is, is that I work hard all day using my mind to develop new programs, coach people through very challenging health and life issues. So I have to be very, very on my game, kind of like an air traffic controller. Sure. So at the end of the day, I want to smoke some tobacco and some indica to kind of take me down out of my head into my body and sit there and watch something that is entertaining to me. And it might be educational entertainment, but it might just be pure entertainment. But I want to go unconscious and let go of the world. I'm the exact same way as you. I I can speak. Everything you're saying is pretty much my lifestyle. Okay, so here's what I'm driving at. Consciousness takes a lot of energy. Research shows that whenever the brain's cognitively engaged, it uses 80% of the available blood sugar at any given moment, which is why most people will have had the experience in school of walking out after a two-hour test and feeling exhausted. 
if you, I've studied the biographies of over 150 of the world's greatest thinkers at, at 150 minimum, and I've got them all right here to prove it. And what do you see consistently? Many of them work themselves to death yes. thinking, right? Yeah. Thinking. People like Friedrich Nietzsche, he worked himself to death thinking. He wasn't a healthy man to begin with, but he worked his mind so hard he practically killed There's himself. too much in the mind. Too much in yeah. the head. So yeah. what happens is the head will just eat your body alive. Why? What am I saying? I'm saying that consciousness actually takes a lot of work because the first thing the body seeks to do whenever you're... Like, for example, if I take you in the gym and teach you a new exercise, say a kettlebell exercise that you're not familiar with, you won't have a neural pathway for that exercise. So you're going to have to pay attention or you're going to get hurt. But by the time you've done your 300th to 350th repetition, you will have developed. Well, my subconscious can then take that over. You will have developed and, an engram. Right. An a engram. motor engram, which is a series of processes or commands associated with any given cognitive task. So you'll now have a neural network that runs on its own in the background. Okay. So whenever we're conscious of something that we do repetitiously, like how do I get this new iPhone to work? Now you have to become conscious, but once you've got it, then you become unconscious, okay? And an easy way to demonstrate that is if you use a standard keyboard on a computer, which was actually designed to slow your fingers down, did you know that? Because the old typewriters, if you type too fast on the, the arm, oh, jam. Were, they would jam. Yep. So they actually restructured the keyboard to make it harder to get to the letters, <laughs> But there's actually keyboards that have been designed that are more natural to how the body actually new works. new er ergonomic ones. Yeah, yes, yeah, and, yeah. And, they, and the letters are in different positions, so right. it works much better. But the point I'm making is, if you've been typing on a standard keyboard that's designed to make you go slow, even though you're on the best keyboard in the world now, you won't be able to type on it because you're automatically using the old pathways and it takes 3,500 to 5,000 repetitions with full consciousness to override the average old autonomic program and this is with movement with movement or right i'm talking about the science of rehabilitation to right. make a point what i'm driving at is that the powers that be the facebook's the google's the large corporations and and i have a podcast with um uh near Ayal, um who who is one of the experts on this and he talks about his own addiction and how he had to break it. So his first book was all about it. I forgot the name of it right now. It's on my podcast. But his second book was about how do you get out of it? Okay, yeah, <laughs> right? yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you get in it? And then here, yeah. let me give you the blueprint well, on how to get out. his first book showed you the technology of yeah. how you'd make a website addictive and all this stuff. Yeah. But then he admits, okay, I got addicted. So now he wrote a book about how to get unaddicted. <laughs> and so the – and Steiner talks about this too. He, he says consciousness – is one of the primary causes of disease. Of yes. disease. Right. Why? Because if you're conscious that your husband's cheating on you, then it'll wind you up. But when you were unconscious of it, it didn't have any negative effect on you. Right. When you're conscious of what's really going on in the world, it can wind you up because you realize there's an invisible enemy sneaking around the house that's got your children and your spouse and your everybody else completely under a spell logged in right but yeah. you see they're unconscious this is this goes to epigenetics well it right? is epigenetics it's, full on yeah but it's I mean, epigenetics with high-tech manipulation and it's it's actually creating a some kind of offshoot evolution something i we, i don't have a name for it in children and it, it's, it, it's yeah. creating it's creating a, a group of human beings that should the electricity go out for any reason will be absolutely <laughs> and utterly in a crisis because they won't know a damn thing about how to find food, water. They won't know how to start a fire properly. It's almost the perfect human being to control. It is the perfect human being Wouldn't to control. Wouldn't you say? Huh? You agree, huh? I do agree. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when, when I was a kid... It, we didn't have all this. I mean, I'm I'm in my late 30s, and I was out in the canyons of La Jolla and all over San Diego, 
eight years young, shooting BB guns and, mm -hmm. you know, as a pyromaniac, building fires and waterways and God. building dams. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> in San Diego. Yeah. In San Diego. And, you know, I'm a fire monkey, right? So, yeah, exactly. Uh, and, you know, thank that. God you didn't burn the place down. <laughs> Almost a couple of times. Wow. But it was, it was, th those are the memories and those are the experiences that I have that shape me into who I am today, that, sh that developed my conscious, that mm. allowed me to go into places of servitude for my family that allowed me to go into places of wanting to be a pillar in community that gone into places where I wanted to learn how to grow my own food and I d developed my faculties to go into things like biodynamics mm -hmm. and to learn things that you know avocado wolf was teaching me at an early age yeah. and to learn stuff that David Icke was putting out when I was 12 I mean I, I read the truth shall set you free when I was 11 or 12 and I was in a position because of those fundamentals aspects of being sovereign in, in my body without a, a controlling conscious a outside force dictating my conscious and telling me and 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 molding me into the slave that they want you to be yeah and 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 that was uh i i reflect a lot of that on my meditation that's part of my ritual every day as i go back to those experiences and i reverse engineer back into the development stage yeah. and those are those are the primary ages right you know third yeah. tri third trimester to age seven that's the biology of belief yeah and so i i'm i'm with you one million percent so what do we do about it hi you guys i know you all know that super green powders are good for you if they're made from organic sources and they're processed properly so the nutrients are there and that's exactly what paleo valley does with their super greens powder so i brought autumn smith in to tell us exactly how she created it and why and what it's going to do for you when you try their amazing organic super greens powder autumn what is the magic you've got here well, like you said, we all need to get more of those micronutrients that you find in fresh fruits and vegetables. And so we've created a powder that you do not have to choke down. It has an absolutely delicious berry lemonade flavor. And the reason that it's different is because A, it is all organic, 23 organic superfood ingredients. And B, it is a very, very gut-friendly product because what I've found in my practice is that a lot of people don't do well with cereal grasses. And we know cereal grasses, like wheat grass can contain lectins that can be hard on the guts of a lot of people I work with. And so what we did was we created a a cereal grass-free alternative. We use high quality, the cleanest, highest quality spirulina on the market, raised in India. And then we added the 22 other organic fresh fruits and vegetables, and the flavor will surprise you. So all you have to do to check it out is go ahead to paleovalley.com. That's P-A-L-E-O-V-A-L-L-E-Y.com. And you can use the code CHECK15, that's lowercase c-h-e-k-15, at checkout. My son drinks it every day. We call it his ninja juice, and I sincerely hope your family loves it as much as ours does. All right, everybody. Go paleo green and get rocking. Hope you love it. Well, there's something else I want to share because there's something that a lot of people don't understand, and, and uh, this is well discussed in Jungian psychology. And um, there's a fantastic book that I'm, I've been reading by a Jungian psychologist named Jason E. Pace, if I remember right. And uh, it's called Religious But Not Religious. And uh, he's going to be on my podcast uh, sometime soon here. We got him scheduled now because his book's really good. But he's talking in Jungian terms, but one of the things he says that's profound what is a phone? It's a, really a vehicle for sharing images, right? It didn't used to be. It used to be a voice machine, but now it's an image machine. It's an information transfer machine. It's a high-speed right. information transfer right. machine. One of the excuses for 5G is so you can download videos faster. It's like, okay, give me a break. Yeah, you need to be jogging in the park and downloading the Titanic. Yes. Yeah, and, th that, and, that's necessary. And watching it while you're... Watching it. Tripping over everything and, and doing killing yourself. 30 emails to at the same time. Yes. And downloading 100 PDF files because that's what we need to be doing In today. In other words, you're becoming a <laughs> schizophrenic. Absolutely. Right? 100%. It's actually developing schizophrenic qualities. It is. In the brain. I've seen those imaging. It's yeah. freaking wild stuff. Okay, so the point I'm driving at is that most of the way we use computers, I mean, what do I do on my computer? Aside from exchanging email, I spend most of my time putting presentations together, slideshows. 
and I convey my key points with images. So, so this is uh, so you approach your computer with awareness and intention. Right. I'm leading to something much deeper okay, than that. I'm okay. just trying to set the stage. Okay, keep going. So the point that I'm driving at is if, if you study Jungian psychology, and you can also study this in art therapy, because what is art? It's images. You're creating images. Um, you can study it in psychology, because if you look at how a child's brain works, they actually process images way before they have language. A child's processing images from the instant that it can see its mother's face. But what what Jung showed and what Jungian psychologists reverberate is that an image is a complete experience. Okay, so what do I mean by that? What's better, listening to someone have sex or watching someone have sex? Would pornography be so popular if it was just audio alone? No. No. Of course not. Because when you're watching something, it activates your mirror neurons for one. So the experience happens inside of you. And when I'm looking at a picture of someone having sex, I have to recreate the picture inside of my own brain. We don't see with our eyes. Our eyes conduct waves of information and our brain decodes that into patterns which become images. The brain sees before the eyes do. The eyes yeah. are just conductors of light. They're yes. conductors of light. Okay, so... If you see a picture of someone that just had shit thrown at them. I, I love your uh, metaphors here. This is great. Well, I'm trying to yeah. make a point. The point is this. If you see an image of someone that has shit thrown at them, it's not a scratch and sniff image. But immediately, if you, you smell the shit, you smell the of shit. Course. You think, oh my God, that's got to stink. Or Absolutely. That's terrible. Or you think, oh, look, it's touching his mouth. Oh my God. So you have a very visceral experience looking at the image. This is why when people go to movies, even though it's make believe, they cry when people die, they cry when people get married, they get horny watching people having sex. They get mad at the enemy, not realizing it's just a movie and it's all made up. They get high if it's a scary movie. The dopamine's exactly. exploding. That's, so yeah. what Jung's pointing out is that images are complete experiences, and they're so complete that the brain cannot differentiate at some point between the image and reality. That has absolutely, it has no idea what's real and what's not. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what am I saying? We use images constantly and though we think we're just looking at our phone or looking at a television we don't realize it's tapping into the deepest cores of our psyche and because so many people are out of touch with the world and out of touch with food and out of touch with the things we've been talking about how nature works and what we're doing to nature they don't actually have a clue that the further they go into the images that are put into their minds by corporations for example Images that make you think you've got to vaccinate yourself constantly and take these drugs and you've got to have this security system or you're going to get broken into and all this stuff. So those images actually tap into and create the illusion that you're living in an environment that's full of viruses or full of criminals or full of sex addicts or whatever the hell they're trying to get you to buy or buy into. And so the, it's it's not some evil witch brewing up a pot and laughing. It's an actual corporation that's casting its spell. It's on a mankind. corporation. This is this is the real spell. Brewing up a culture yeah. and going to the bank. Absolutely. Right? Oh, 100%. so I'm I'm building a scenario here, and the scenario I'm building is this: We've talked about the image. Most of us listening to this conversation would say, "Yes, I I realize what he's saying. I've had those experiences." And you just pay attention to what happens to you. And this is why, for example, when c corporations like HeartMath do research, I don't know if you're, you're probably aware of HeartMath's research. Oh, but, absolutely. So they hook you up to biofeedback and they monitor your heart rate, your breathing rate, your galvanic skin response, their your electrophysical vagal, all sorts of vagal yeah. response. Yeah. And then what they do is they're monitoring the heart and they're monitoring the brain. And they have a computer that has images some that are very shocking like people flying through a window in a head-on car accident or someone who's cut their leg off or been traumatized very bad and somewhere, you know, someone's giving birth to a, their baby or holding their newborn baby or 
graduating from high school or winning a marathon or something like that. But what they found out is the heart knows what the image is seven seconds before the brain, five to seven seconds before the brain's even consciously aware of it. And the interesting thing is the heart is responding to the next image as much as five to seven seconds before it's even on the screen. So they're actually reading it unconsciously, (laughs) right? So I I think what you're saying here, here, and if everyone's listening, is this is how dynamic the human being is. Oh yes, yes. And and we've take we've lost that. We don't even realize that just one you know perspective or one shot of one picture or or anything can cause a cataclysmic reaction throughout the body, whether it's good or bad. Well, those responses that we're talking about, the heart's ability to read what's going on in the environment unconsciously and accurately, very accurately, is how we knew when water was running low or when the sun was going to shine for too long and we were going to have a a, a drought or when we needed to change location to find food. We needed to go hunting in a different territory or fishing in a different region. But what's happening now is people are getting so far away from using the instincts to be in touch with reality that they don't know how to use their survival instincts. So now their survival instincts are confused because their survival instincts think, I need more coffee, or I need to watch another show, or I need to take another pill because I'm anxious. But oftentimes they don't realize that some of that is the authentic awareness that nature is falling apart and the fabric of reality is falling apart, but they don't have a conscious connection to what the impressions coming from the unconscious are really trying to direct them to. And so the... So the soul is fractured and the being has been completely... Confused. Yeah, just distorted. We're, yeah. We're, it's a full distortion. It's really like someone's in a coma. They've been hit over the head with a massive sledgehammer full of information. And we're processing information at rates that the human nervous system's never been exposed Absolutely. to. Absolutely. But to take this one step deeper... You know the old saying, a picture is worth a thousand words. Well, an archetype is worth millions of images. So what's happening is they're using archetypal imagery. So if they want to sell you vaccinations, they show uh, something like a parent with a kid covered in chicken pox or something, or, or something that makes you think, oh my God, that's going to get me. And they're using the archetype. So they would use the, and then of course the doctor's standing by ready to give you an injection. So there's the archetype of the healer. Trauma and guilt. Trauma. And so problem solution. Problem, reaction, solution. Problem, reaction, solution. So because the conscious mind, unless you're skilled at this and you know how to put your defense system up, and that's why I'm telling people this, because once you learn how the game goes, you can say, oh, there's another scam. I don't even need to look at that. Turn <laughs> right. the page, switch, switch the channel, skip through that commercial. Um, archetypes tap, archetypes are the root language of consciousness, right? We all know inherently what a father is, what a mother is, what a brother is, what a sister is, what a king is, what a queen is. Uh, we all have an innate sense of justice. Um, the morality code. We all know yeah. what a teacher is. We all know what um, it means to kill something. Um, those are archetypes. So those are really at the very, very fabric of our consciousness. So when you see what they talk about on movies like Social Dilemma, and you see the the evidence in the pandemic documentaries, and you see the evidence on Green Med Info and London Real and all these places that are giving us an opportunity to hear the other side of the story, you can actually start seeing how electronic devices are being used to not only disconnect people from what reality is, but to create the illusion of a reality that carries a threat that can only be addressed through the way they want you to address it. I mean, uh, you know, we we could go on and on on all that stuff because I have lots I could say. But I think w- what I wanted to share is is understand that there is actually a science behind this, 
and that if no, you, none of this is by chance. No, this it, is an algorithmic, specific blueprint of understanding the human psyche and the entire biological network that you just perfectly laid out. And these yes. guys are masters at their doing uh, how they're doing it. They're they play, hire they're, the best the psychologists, best psychologists, the best researchers in the world, and the best programmers, and, and the best programmers, and they're coding it to perfection. And it's being perpetrated on every media platform today. And yeah. so we're at a war. I mean, this is, I mean, I would consider this some type of pseudo war. It's a silent you know? war. Yeah. It's a silent war. And it's interestingly. It's a spiritual war. It's it, a spiritual yeah. war because ultimately what is spirituality? Spirituality at its fundamental core is a connection to a greater whole. And what the research is showing beyond a shadow of a doubt is the deeper we go into AI-driven technologies, the more disconnected we're getting, the more dissonant we're getting with each other, the more our relationships with ourselves and others are breaking down, and the more the fabric of our culture is breaking down. And if you want to take somebody over, just break down the fabric of their culture because then you don't know what's safe and what's not safe. Absolutely. And yeah. that's when a myth is breaking down and that's when isms pop up and that's when people start grouping up into dangerous groups that have father figures that are usually dangerously rebellious or pirate-like people. Um, to me, you know, we have a choice between two pirates for president. Uh, you know, <laughs> I, I mean, that's my own opinion. I'm not asking anyone else to believe it, but when I use my knowledge to watch what's going on in my 59 years of life, uh, there's you can always tell who the presidents were that were the real deal because they execute them. <laughs> they yeah. get rid of them quick. Absolutely. You know, and, and, and anybody like, uh, you know, Martin Luther King or Abe Lincoln or John F. Kennedy, those are threats to the establishment. And so they died a martyr's death and a hero's death for, for, for trying to protect us against this stuff. And the, um, Steiner, you know, said this in his lectures in the, you know, 1916, I think he started the the Araman deception, and he said, "100 years from now, we're going to be in the age of Araman, and mm -hmm. Atriman is the Zoroastrian deity of materialism, and where you're going to be losing your spirit to a mad man-made technocracy, yeah. and that was going to remove the the presence of God in your life and tell you that you must rely on a system." And that you are only flesh and bone, nothing more. And in order to sustain, you must abide by that system. And that system appears today in all forms of the technology that you just spoke about. And so I, I highly recommend people reading a little bit on the influences of Araman. It's, it's, it gives you kind of a, an overview of everything that Paul just went over right now. Yeah, I'm not sure which of Steiner's books in my library is the best one because most of them are so deep. Most people wouldn't have the sticking power to get through it have you got a specific yeah the influences of araman oh, okay and uh the luciferian and araman'ic impulse and, okay and, and and where we can find the christ conscious in between those two polarizing powers and energies where one's just hyper hyper ego spiritual and the other one is a lower vibrational dense bone matter government you know vaccines system medical system and what we what we know today as fake science and, yeah. and scientism becoming the new religion. And there's just masses of great information now by all sorts of scientists and doctors and therapists just laying the cards right on the table of the dangers of this technology for children, for people in general, how it disintegrates the brain hemispheres, creates uh, neurotransmitter imbalances. Uh, Destroys the microbiome of the child. Creates learning deficits, uh, <sighs> creates anxiety, hyper... hyper um, Hyperattention activity, uh, all of those, yeah, ADD. ADD and ADHD, yeah. attention deficit and attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. And I see it too. Uh, you know, we were carefully watching Mana um, because he has certain things he loves to watch, various, uh, like he, there's a couple of uh, little things, he, you know, monster truck and stuff that are very kid-like. Sure. But those things are still so powerful. We found that if he gets more than about an hour of television, he becomes m very emotionally unstable. He gets, he gets angry, right? And he gets he gets angry. Yeah. He gets emotional. He can't decide what he wants. He will sit in the corner and pout, and he loses his sense of direction. Like he doesn't know what he wants to eat. He doesn't know if he's tired or not. 
I say to him, what's wrong with you? And he just says, I don't know. Yeah, his brain's in theta, Yeah, right? And so just, if he's in that imaginary brainwave of just receivership and imagination and learning from his father yeah. and learning from his mother, and he's being um, filtered and programmed by distortion and explosion and all that stuff, he's absorbing all that to the cell. Yeah, and he yeah. goes into withdrawal because of the dopamine, dopamine hit hit. being hit. given yeah. by all this stimulus. <laughs> and so, you know, whenever I, whenever he says, daddy, please let me just watch this. I say, I'll let you watch it tomorrow. And the more he resists, the more I know he's addicted. So we've actually cut television out for him quite a lot. Um, did, did you wean him off? Because if, if someone's listening right now and they have children and, and you working nine to five and the, you know, they're, they're on their iPads and now because of COVID, everyone's on their iPads doing their school programs. I mean, this is the general population. I, I think the philosophy is, you know, you slowly wean them off and you give them different opportunities to grow well, outside. we didn't slowly wean them off. When we all concluded, okay, this is a problem, we, 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 we don't want to totally take the technology out of his life because if he's not aware of how the technology works, he won't be able to function in the world. By the time he's 16 or 18, the technology is going to be wildly more advanced than it is now. So we we made a family agreement. We don't want to completely cut our kids off of of the technology that's the environment that they're probably going to have to live in. Otherwise, it's kind of like being um uh you know um what do you call them a uh, not a Mormon the 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 people Amish the Amish yeah. right like yeah. they're still using horses and buggies. Well, <laughs> if you're raised in that kind of environment, you're screwed when you go to try to get off that plantation because you won't even know. <laughs> Sure. How a phone works or anything. You're gonna see you're walking like into another planet, really, with beings of a very different nature that look at you like what the hell's totally. wrong with you. So you're gonna use discernment and limit and and really watch it and evaluate. Well, we did, and we you know, he's four and a half now, so we we would notice that there's a tipping point for him, and, and we found that the tipping point is an hour a day. If he goes more than an hour a day, it comes at a real cost to him and to us. Sure. So what, what time? What time is he watch that at? It varies. Um, just depends on what's going on. Like if the girls just came home from shopping and I'm working and they need to be able to unpack without kids getting through the bags, they might say, "Okay, you can watch your show now." Got it. Or it just depends so on flow. the flow. There's no set yeah. timing to it. But what we did is, I said to the nanny, "I said, look, I want you to buy. I don't care how much it costs." buy arts and crafts. I want you to keep these kids engaged in, in very much the Steiner approach, painting, creating things, hiking, playing, swinging, working with his trucks in the dirt. Problem build. solving. Yeah. Like he comes out <laughs> while I'm building my water charger. Yeah. I give him his own trowel and he goes and he, he takes cement. He gets a little bucket of cement and he sticks stones together and makes his own little rock stacks and he has the greatest time he thinks it's great and he comes back the next day and he checks and he goes look daddy it's all stuck together and tries to break them apart and they won't break apart and he gets that sense of building something you know how priceless that is take him in the gym i told the nanny take him in the gym whenever we go to the gym to work out we always invite the kids to come with us and they love being in the gym um we take them in the swimming pool as often as possible. We uh, have them on swings, climbing. I often take them out on the weekends, rock climbing, because we have huge rock walls on the property. But the, the, the thing is, is his whole demeanor changes, and he actually becomes much happier and much more grounded, and, he, and his emotions are much more stable. Now, he's getting his jing out, you know, he's off gassing, he's connecting to the earth, he's he's using his own faculties, he's developing and he's experiencing. He probably sees seven lizards, birds flying. Oh, yes. You know, those are all faculties that a child needs to develop at that age. They need to be in the real world, breathing, experiencing, seeing it all. When we caught that rattlesnake last time I was there, yes, he was part he of that experience. Yeah. Well, he's the one that saw he it. He saw it. Yeah, yeah, he's the one that came running. And he's the champion of yeah. finding rattlesnakes. He's found more <laughs> rattlesnakes than anybody. Yeah. I mean, th th this is what, what you're laying out right now. This is what the modern family is missing. Yes. And, and here's my point that I'm trying to drive at, though. We found the threshold for him is one hour. 
what do you think the national average is for, for children watching time? TV? Oh man, it's, it's scary. To, it's seven or eight. Yeah, it's, it's depending on which study you read. It's between five point six and seven point eight hours. It's just it's. Uh... So the question is, what are they doing all day? I mean, like that's if I say to you, Shervin, I want you to devote five point six hours a day to meditation, the first thing you're going to say is, Paul, I'll go broke. <laughs> I have to make a living. I'm at about 90 minutes. <laughs> well, that's good. That's very good. Uh, you, no, no, but I, I get your point. Right? It's shocking. It's like how... And that's, that's our future leaders. That's our decision makers. As we, you know, that's, that's the generation that's evolving, that's going to become adults, that's going to go to the workforce, yeah. that is here to actually develop real businesses that yeah. are, are creating, yeah. not just going into the corporate structure nonsense yeah. where the top top are just making money yeah. hand over fist this is a, a breeding cycle this is a, a very very dangerous time this is i mean this is the i think this is the one of the most pressing things i'm always talking about the birth process and the cosmic mm -hmm. birth and all those yeah. things Th that speaks directly to what you're saying how we've lost our way yes. from the porn industry to the medical system to how we're you know nurturing the baby in the yeah. womb how we're giving birth yeah. how we're you know raising these children this is the, the I, I would say the waldorf way or the fundamental way is what is needed in this reality you know bioptimizers makes an amazing product called p3om which is a prebiotic product and it's amazing for uh not only helping uh, repopulate the gut with uh, friendly bacteria. But as Wade will tell you, it's really, really an amazing uh, product in case you ever feel like you're getting any kind of food poisoning or illness coming on. And Wade's right here with me, and he's the co founder of Bioptimizers, and he knows more about P3OM than anybody. But I can tell you this I've had nothing but excellent results and nothing but positive feedback from all my clients and friends that I've turned it on turned on to P3OM. So Wade, tell us a little bit about P3OM and, and why it works so well. Well, P3OM is, we call it the Navy SEAL of probiotics. Amen. Bas basically, its job is to kick out the bad guys in your body. Uh, food poisoning is one of those things from bad bacteria. What we've done is we've taken a an aggressive strain of L-plantarum. We put it into toxic soup, ran a sine wave, to keep a few of them alive. And the few survivors, we grow in very specialized medium to make a cultured, patented enzyme that has extraordinary powers. Uh, number one, it survives the intestinal tract. Yes. And number two, it is absolutely hunts down uh, pathogens in, this, in the body, bacteria, viruses, these type of things. And this is really where the future of probiotics is. It is about developing and culturing and creating super strains of probiotic, very much like the Navy SEALs go through a training and these yes. individuals mm -hmm. have extraordinary powers to deal with chaos. And in today's world where we want to improve our immunity and our function and our gut health, P3M is head and shoulders above any probiotic out there. So my understanding is it can be used daily as a supplement, but it can also be used in larger quantities as a defense measure. We've tested this uh, literally with over a hundred of our friends who have been suffering from various times of food poisoning. And a handful of those guys, when you're in food poisoning and within 20 to 30 minutes, you complete recovery. That's awesome. And I've, I've uh, seen it happen myself. Angie has felt bad a number of times and uh, several of people in the, in the house or family have. And I say, take 10 if that doesn't feel good in an hour, take 20. And you've told me you can't overdose on them, which is amazing. Yeah, that's the beauty of P3M. You can't take too much. They'll fight off the bad guys and uh, they'll get your digestion rocking and rolling the way it should. So if you want to have a healthy gut and you want some defense, carry P3OM with you wherever you go, airplanes, cars, business meetings, hotels, conferences, and you've got your Navy SEALs in the bottle and they're ready for you anytime. Wade, how do we, we get a hold of your amazing P3OM product? Super easy. Just go to www.bioptimizers.com slash living4d and put in Paul10 for your 10% discount code. That's B-I-O-P-T-I-M-I-Z-E-R-S.com slash living4d and Paul 10 for your discount code. You got it. There you go. Try it. You'll love it. I use them. I can't tell you enough how much I love this product. I think it's a genius product and you've heard it right from the master himself. Get your P3OM. Let us know how you feel about it. 
Lots of love. What's kind of wild is it used to be religion that was the champion of brainwashing us, <laughs> and they rejected science. That's the Cartesian well, science split. is a new religion. But now science has taken over the job of religion. You're using that word science very liberally, my friend. It's, what is real science? It's definitely, well, they're definitely not using the scientific method. They're using scientific research into how the brain works, into how the emotions work, into what triggers us and what creates buying impulses. Right. They're using science to build technology. Most of these things are based on quantum physics, which is science. So they're actually using science and manipulating it to get the results they want and much of the science that's being done is immoral, right? It's immoral. Oh, it's um, it's. I'd I'd like to say it's perverted. It's it's perverted. It's dangerous, a per- but as it's a perversion of of humanity, of as, our soul, of our carnation here. It, it it's destroying the soul's carnation and creating karmic loops. And what we're we were born here to do something. We were Not born only that; here. it's destroying the notion of trust. We used to trust scientists because scientists were people that were honest explorers of truth. Now there certainly are scientists out there, and I've got a library full of them. So I'm I'm having to use broad brush strokes. But the reality of it is, for every one good scientist, there's 150 that are bought and paid for. Yeah. For example, if you look at it, at this in the soil industry, the soil science industry, 75 percent of all the scientists that do research into soil science are on the payrolls of major corporations selling pesticides and farming chemicals. Therefore. They're the ones that are funding the major journals. When you have 75% of the scientists in the entire field bought and paid for, it's going to affect your science. (laughs) You think? Yeah. Which is eventually- Which is going to affect affect your food. Your food and your health. And your water. And your whole reality. And your air. And and the animals. And your greenhouse, (laughs) uh, right? The outgassing. And- it's going to affect your psychology and it's going to affect your spending patterns and it's going to influence how much you're addicted to and connected to the medical system because you're trying to medicate all these pains. So there's just one arena. But one of the things that's- really Wait, wait. So what you're saying is there's a conflict of interest here? There's a, <laughs> well, it depends on which side of the fence you're on. Right. right? If, you're, if you're only into making money, then there's a total interest. But if you're in the side of making um, health and life- and, and, and sustainability. I, I compare this to the pharmaceutical industry, right? They're manufacturing drugs, drugs that are specifically made to not heal the system, but mask the symptom, right? Yeah. It's symptomology, right? At yeah. its finest. But most of these um, big, big pharma companies are publicly traded and they have major shareholders. Yes. So then they have a fiduciary obligation. Which to, means? Which means that they are legally forced to turn a profit every single quarter. What does that mean? That means every single day yeah. there's a legal- someone make money. Someone has to make money. But we're talking about drugs to human beings beings. Yes. Many of the drugs which do not outperform a placebo, and so they have to fudge the science to make it look like it does. Oh, man. You know, this brings me back to what me and David always talk about, because if we go down into the treachery of our reality, um, which we do quite a bit, it, it takes us back to the cosmic giggle. And, yes. And, and we... We still... You know, you're hearing all this stuff from me and Paul, and this is this is what we like to talk about. But getting into a place of balance and not allowing these things to overconsume you. And I like what you told me inside the other room just just before we started which was, was which was the thing about the dragon. Is that you right. you know you see a dragon in front of you and he's about to puff a serious you know flame towards you. Yeah. Do, would you turn your back to it and wish it's not there? And actually actually forget about wishing it's not there. You turn your back and don't even realize it's there. So you're completely well, you, catatonic. You you would yeah. have to see it to know it was there. But my point was <laughs> I was saying People don't realize we're facing a dragon of major proportions, but they cannot see it. They can't see it. Because they're already been breathed into the belly of the dragon. They're unconsciously being consumed. And then I said to you, did you study history at all? And do you remember when people like Captain James Cook and other explorers, which had these huge ships, would approach native cultures when they were approaching land, and the people did not see the ships? 
Yeah, because they couldn't even grasp they what they're seeing. They did not seeing. have a concept in yeah. their mind for a ship that big. To them, it was an island, right? They thought, wow, there's an island out there. What's going on? But they didn't even see it. The, the key thing is, in almost every case, and this is documented, the only person in the tribe that could see the ship was the shaman. If someone got out of the ship and rowed to shore, which they used to do back then with rowboats, then they would see them right. because they have a context for that. But when the ship was sitting there with its cannon sticking out the side and its massive sails, they did not even see the ship. The shaman would awfully, often run down and pull them off the beach and say, get back until I determine if this is safe or not. <laughs> And then they would greet the landing party and then get slaughtered. <laughs> it's just it's, it's just unbelievable. And that, that was a beautiful way to articulate the point of what we're dealing today as a mass, as a as a general population. I was I, I don't like to go to LA a lot. I just it's not somewhere I like to go. No offense, Los Angeles. It's just not well, really it's my famous vibration. Famous for being a, a you know a, a kind of a rat race, well, right? Like New lost, York. Yeah, it's Lost Angels, right? Yeah. It's Fallen Angels. Yeah. So I was driving on the four hundred five. Um, passing um, Howard Hughes, going southbound back from Venice down to you know Orange County, and on the right, I was I was just looking up, and I was crossing billboard after billboard after billboard, and all it was was accident lawyers, um, alcohol, strip clubs, yeah. and new crazy disgusting food products left and right and yeah. then as you're passing long beach you go past that entire massive refinery you know which yes. one i'm talking yeah, about uh -huh. it looks like something out of the matrix yeah like the future you know big oil refinery oil refinery and i'm, th I'm thinking you know how many millions of people drive by all of that every single day and they're completely desensitized to what is happening around them and they're just stuck in their whatever reality, in their micro reality. And most of these people would just say they're just trying to get by. And how many people live around that refinery and breathe that Can shit all day? Can you believe that? Th that's what we're dealing with today. I can't even believe people it, live along the freeway. If, if we had our faculties, if we had a disposition that was manufactured and designed and rooted from our human spirit... We would revolt against all totally. this. Totally, it would be a it would be a complete revolution. I'm not talking about a spiritual paradigm shift. I'm talking about a explosion, and we would shake all of this out and and go back to a, a state of utopia, yeah. which is where we need to be heading. We, totally. Yeah. I don't know if we need to go to a utopia because I don't think a utopia is realistic in. <laughs> an environment or on a planet where really from my lifetime of research, the, the main function of the planet is to generate consciousness. If you don't have consciousness, then you don't really have anything. Adam and Eve didn't know they were naked till they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil sure. and became conscious, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And if, if you realize that it takes the entire universe to create the planet and it takes the entire universe to create each of us. Now I could go through each of the steps of that. I've done it on lots of podcasts, so I won't bore people. And if you look at the research of John Archibald Wheeler, who was one of the most highly esteemed quantum physicists and, and uh, I believe was also an astrophysicist and he, he was cohorts with Einstein and he was uh, one of Richard Fe uh, Feynman's mentors and many of the top, minds of today were his students and he he was known to be a renaissance man who was very aware of and into poetry and eastern mysticism and looked at the world through a broad lens but was a genius quantum physicist what wheeler shows very scientifically is that the reason we are here is for the universe to interact with itself and see itself and so when you look at the fact that the earth is really a place where we grow into a higher level of awareness than an animal has so that we can actually realize, wow, it took the whole universe to make us. Wow, this is the most marvelous mystery. And then you get more conscious and you go, wow, if you study quantum physics, a lot of people don't agree with each other what it means. If you study medicine, most of the most esteemed colleagues don't agree with each other on what's the right way to approach any disease. If you research cold water therapies, cold showers, or Wim Hof, you'll find some people that think he's a genius, some people think he's an idiot and a fraud, right? So 
what happens is, is we actually have to keep growing our conscious awareness until we actually have the ability to make discernment for ourselves and trust our own judgment and ultimately that process, I could go through the structure stages of consciousness, but to keep it simple, the process is, you know, there's two, there's considered to be two paths of light, uh, enlightenment. One's called the positiva, one's called the negativa. The positiva means you accumulate more and more knowledge until all of a sudden the penny drops <laughs> and you go, holy fuck. It took the entire universe to make me. And the next realization is God is everyone, everything, and everywhere all the time, and that God loves it all. The negative path is what people like Chang Tzu and, and uh, yogis meditating in caves. So what they do is they go the opposite direction. They completely disengage the ego, and they go so deep into meditation that they do two things. They become unified with the unconscious and the superconscious at the same time. And I've got in my library here books documenting, I think it was Chang Su, professors and people would hear about him and travel thousands of miles, and this is a long time ago, just to debate the guy, and they couldn't beat him in a debate. <laughs> and they're like, how do you know this? He never went to school. He meditated in caves all the time, but what he would basically tell them is, well, you know, when you become one with everything, you already have access to everything. So whatever is in your head, I can get access to it too, because it's part of the universe. Absolutely. Right? Yep. So the negative of path is to diminish conscious activity and go in fully into the unconscious and access the super conscious. And the reason they do that is because ideas are often incorrect, aren't they? So what they do is they don't go into the world of externally generated ideas. They go into the depths of themselves, which is where they find the cosmos. And then from there, they have access to the mind of the cosmos. So they're actually plugging themselves into the mind of the universe to ask questions, whereas the professor's plugging himself into the mind of culture to ask questions, and therefore he's susceptible to the weaknesses that he could never do the research to determine if every idea he's believed is actually true or not. So there's a lot of assumptions. So there's layers to this. There's layers of it, right? <laughs> right, I'm, I feel that. But if you look at um, Cosmic Consciousness by Maurice Buck, for example, he's he's was a very smart guy, and he became enlightened through the positiva path. He grew this knowledge that all of a sudden all the dots connected, and you know, my awakening came through the positiva path. I studied so many branches of science and religion and culture and shamanism that there came a time when I realized at a very visceral level what I was, who I was, why I was here, and what everything that was going on here was and what the universe was all about. Because if you actually pay attention to the wise men of each of these different traditions and, and, and um, fields of science, like if you want to really understand the mind, talk to someone like Ken Wilber, for example, right? He will help you understand the mind. He'll help you understand religion. He'll help you understand meta-psychology uh, and metaphysics, but he can also help you understand physics and the social environment because the guy's a genius, right? If you listen to um, Eckhart Tolle, you're going to talk to a spiritual genius. If you listen to Deepak Chopra, you'll talk to someone who, I would say, has hit the positiva um, jackpot, right? Because he's got a broad enough and a deep enough depth of knowledge that he can understand how most of the things happening around you work to the point that he too can understand his place in it, right? So I think that we're in this situation that's dangerous because now so much of the positiva is being manipulated by corporations and and they're controlling the curriculums in schools and universities and so few people are going to take the negativa path but if you go to places like tibet where they put kids in monasteries as early as three and four years of age those kids are going into the negativa path half the time and then they're going into the positive path but they're going into debate classes and they're studying the scriptures and they're really learning how to think constructively so those people are actually accessing both pathways they're learning how to go deep into the unconscious and access the superconscious 
but they're going deep into the conscious and learning how to grow your conscious awareness and really how to use um, the capacity for um, rational thinking and debate to look at both sides of what I call holistic thinking. I love Symbiotica's products, as you all know. I share them as often as I can because they work and they're made of the best quality resources you can get. And Symbiotica has just come out with a new liposomal activated charcoal that has many amazing benefits. Sherveen, let us know what is the power, the potency, and the use of liposomal activated charcoal. Paul, this was an exciting one for us because, as you know, we're from the islands of Hawaii and charcoal is really big over there in terms of detoxification. We make ours using coconuts. And this product's the first time it's ever been in a liposomal form, meaning it's protected to make it all the way down into the gastrointestinal area. And then it's really starts taking on its action. Anyone that's got anything dealing with candida overgrowth, exposures to mold, radiation, pesticides, pharmaceutical residues, an overly acidic body, this is a very quick, easy way to provide a rapid solution to any of those issues. If you're dealing with bloating, anything like that, the way charcoal works, it's not an absorber that most people think. It's an adsorber. It's an electrical charge. So it pulls in anything that does not belong in the body into the charcoal and then evacuates and eliminates out. This is one of our top sellers. The reviews on it are incredible. I can't wait for anyone who hasn't used it to try it and just let us know their feedback. Exciting. So if you want to get your liposomal activated charcoal, go to C-Y-M-B-I-O-T-I-K-A.com. That's symbiotica.com. And on checkout, use the code capital C, capital H, capital E, capital K, 15 to get your 15% discount. And while you're there, check out all the amazing Symbiotica products because your discount applies across the board. Enjoy. But uh, before I forgot, I, I wanted to to also give a bit of a positive for technology because certainly we use it. I mean, I love my phone. I, I don't use it uh, very much, but I use it to send text messages, to call people and talk to them, um, and FaceTime when Angie and the kids are away or I'm away from the family uh, uh, traveling. I love visiting them on FaceTime, and I think that's I would much rather see them than just hear them on the phone. So I think, wow, there's a positive use of the technology because you can really connect to somebody at a level you can't connect just through one sensory modality, hearing, right? Sure. But, you know, I'll give you an example. When when Mono was maybe one or two, I can't remember, we got these, we got like a little kid's iPad that had games for kids at that level to help develop their mind. And one of the things we noticed right away is he was really good at puzzles. Right out of the box, the kid could take like a shape and find where it went on the, you know, in the sort of the puzzle layout on the thing, like a triangle. He would know where the triangle is square. He would know where a circle. And so he was very good at that. And so we started realizing that Mana has actually got some natural talents and that he really, like he enjoys building things. So with one of his programs, you can build a monster truck from scratch. You can choose the frame, the engine. Stuff like that I really like for him because yeah. he's actually learning that there's a way things go together, that he's learning that geometry and shape actually has a function in the world. So I, I think that there's a lot of beautiful things about technology, but we need to design technology just like, you know, when you buy cigarettes, it says this can kill you on the package. This is addictive. Well, we should be putting out computers that have clear warnings or even beepers to say you've been on your 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 you've got x hours of screen time and so you know that you're crossing a threshold where you could actually go into an addiction i, I, think, I think providing people with education education and, and, and just awareness absolutely so, so they can use discernment i and, think and, so and the, it's the lack of discernment that's you know just allowing that big tidal wave of you know the total uh mystery invading the human psyche at an early age and all of the spells that are being casted by corporatocracies. Yeah. And so with proper education and proper awareness, the fundamental building blocks, and I, and I would like to re reverse that even more. If you really look at society, most people, you know, for me, I love technology. I use technology every single day. 
I built my business on technology. I'm connecting to people all over the world. I'm influencing so many beautiful people. People are messaging me thousands of messages a week right now. How much of an impact you've had on my life, mm -hmm. you know, seeing your experience, seeing your truth. I honor my existence on social media and I honor everyone that's part of it. And I want to be part of a solution. And it's one of those things where if you have a, you know, a, a a poisonous puddle that's filled with toxins. Do you just want to go build a nice one over here? No, you want to reverse the damage over there. Yes. You want to go there and you want to impact it. You want to provide the right pH, the right solutions, whatever it's yeah. going to need. And, and these are the fundamental aspects. But but the thing that I think is missing here is that we're in a debt-laden society. And so- the, the, well, Because the, of predatory lending. Because of predatory lending, because of problem reaction solution, because of the money factor, the Federal Reserve, everybody should read the creature from Jekyll Island. It, you you got to understand that we we get it. Most people are not worried about these things. They're worried about how to put food on the plate. They're not worried about biodynamic farming. They're worried about how to get a, a can of soup. You know, it's it's gotten to that level. Well, it's worse than that. Yeah. <laughs> they don't realize that what they're putting on their plate isn't even food. It's not even food. It's not even food. But they can't even grasp that concept. Right. If there's a calorie in there, it's going to work. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and that's where we've gotten to. That's the machine model. That's the machine. That's the matrix. Yeah. You know, yeah. they didn't, haven't even given people an opportunity to be able to listen to people like you and I have these conversations. Yeah. You know, there, there's people out there that will never hear this. And that's, I, you, you're with me, right? Oh, totally. And yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I tell people all the time, Mac, actually in 2017, January 2017, what was the title? Um, Take Back Your Health, 2017. I did a webinar, which you can still, and I showed the 10 key principles Noam Chomsky showed how an oligarchy takes over your mind and your money and everything else. I've seen that. I've seen, I've, I, I know exactly Those what you're talking about. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And so what I showed in that presentation is we can use exactly the same technology that is, is disabling us to set ourselves free. The same technology we use to make medicine, we can use to make things to clean up oil spills. The same technology that we use to find oil, we can use to find zero point energy. The same technology that we use to numb ourselves, we can use to awaken ourselves. I, I did a podcast with Dave Asprey where he has this program, 40 Days of Zen, I think it's called. And he's, as you know, Dave's big into technology. He's the founder of the biohacking concept. I know Dave. Yeah. I've met him at some of our conferences, the longevity yeah. conferences. Yeah. And so... What Dave's bent is, is like, hey, Paul, a lot of people aren't going to take the time to sit and meditate, but if I can give them a gadget that takes them into a meditative state, I think that's good for them. And I said, yes, I used, tech, uh, I used heart mass freeze framer technology, their M3, uh, I think it's M3, uh, EM3 wave technology, because a lot of my clients are not the kind of people that can hold still very well, but they love gadgets. And so if I can gadget them into a, a, a state of... Um, of bliss, of mental, peace. emotional equanimity, where they learn to witness their thoughts and they're getting guided by a piece of technology or a guided meditation, then I say, hey, so the point that I'm making is I'm not anti-technology. I'm not anti-medicine. I'm not even anti-vaccine. I'm just anti-vaccines that are more dangerous than what you're, <laughs> what you're trying to protect yourself against. And I'm anti-vaccine against <laughs> an illusory threat because then you're getting poisoned against something you're trying to protect yourself from, but there's no real objective evidence that it's even real. I, I think what you're saying is let's just hit the pause button for a second. Yeah, pause. Yeah, let's yeah. just hit pause because yeah. this this machine is is like a snowball, right? It's just picking up momentum. We just got to pause bigger. and we got to say, okay, what yeah. is it that we all really need together? And what are we trying to achieve? What are we trying to what are, achieve? What, the, what and, the hell are we here doing? What's, and, yeah. and how do we achieve it in a way that's sustainable? Most people's orientation is toward money. Why? Because that's hunting for food today. But there's a certain point at which the consumerist concept becomes a the biggest threat to our survival and we're there right oh, now. Oh, we're beyond, we've passed it. I, the, we're, we're, this yeah, is in it. I, we're in it. We're, yeah. we're, you know, honestly, I, you know, to be a realist, we, we have to come up with solutions fast. I don't think we have too many years because right now nature is so close to an environmental collapse of major proportions. It could be catastrophic for all of us or start wars. I mean, you get enough hungry people and violence is going to be for real. It'll be Mad Max. And, uh, they do a cyber attack on a, a broad 
city like Los Angeles or New York, yeah. within three, four days, people won't know where to get their food. Right. It'll and be it, a riot. It becomes martial law. This is very, very fundamental. And it's right. showing you how we've lost our way. Yes. So I'm I'm saying, okay, what do we need? We need clean water and we need to protect it. We can't have large corporations like Nestle and some of these big corporations buying up water supplies and buying up the rights to your own well, right? They're they're doing this all over the world. One of my clients is a very wealthy woman and she goes out and she identifies where they're trying to buy entire water tables and wells and she will buy them and then protect them so that the public can have access to those wells. But to finish my point, we need water. We need real food. We have got to seriously look at how we're farming and get rid of all these biotech bullshit ideas that we can't feed the people in the world. I've addressed that straight on many times and it's not, it's, 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 it's so wrong that it's not even wrong. I mean, it's like, to it, say no, that, it's, it's, it's sacrilegious and it's, it's the ultimate fuck you to our mother. It is. That's, that's my opinion. Yeah, it is. And it's, um, and I, I just got back from uh, the Sawtooth Mountain Range in Idaho. I was invited by the old Trinity Water Springs and okay, new yes. founders mm-hmm. to come. They, they asked me to be their face of. And we're looking at, and, and I went to the spring and it was, you know, one of the oldest springs in North America, 2.2 miles deep. And I, I just sat there and cried for almost an hour just in the in its awe and its glory of the water and most people have no idea what water is and right they, they, and 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 again i think it's education we got to create mm-hmm. the demand where the people are saying fuck this i'm not taking it anymore and they're demanding the corporations yes. and they're demanding that they have to get their shit together because this is not working yeah we need to go back to an education system that's more like Socrates would have educated you, where you <laughs> sure. walk through the fields and he says, this plant you can eat, that one will kill you. This animal does this, you can use this for that, and you get grounded. Like, that's how I learned on the farm. My father said, okay, this is how the tractor works. This is the clutch pedal. That's the brake pedal. This is the gears. Here's how you run the hydraulics. Here's how you hook the plow up. And you do things that are tangible that ultimately you have to do to feed yourself and survive. But, so we got to we got to get the kids. We got to get, get, get the kids because because the adults right now they don't give a shit about this stuff. Well, they should. They're, well, they should. But let me tell you, all they care about is who's wearing this outfit, what this bullshit movie, mm-hmm. this drama, mm-hmm. fight between these two celebrities. You know, you know the the, the game, whatever it is. Th- th- that's where we're focused on. Right. That's my whole point. Yeah. That's that's what we got to we we got to realize that. You could be watching one of those shows the day that the sex organs of nature collapse and there's no more fruit and there's no more vegetables and we're hanging right there right now. You know, they don't even care. Well, that's that's, a, that's the thing. because That's good. I guess they're yeah. ready to die. Yeah. yeah. Slowly I mean, pretty, and painfully. But they are dying. Oh, that's yeah. the, that's yeah. They are slowly but surely because it's momentum based, right? I, I You don't just wake up one day with diabetes and heart disease and calcification no, no. of the heart. You have to work at it. You have to work at it, right? It's it's momentum. Everything, whether it's going to be the best version of yourself, it's momentum. We're 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 in a in a state of consciousness where nobody gives a shit. We're in a state of unconsciousness. Yeah, unconsciousness. For lack of a better way of saying it, that nobody cares. They yeah. don't care where they're going to be tomorrow. They don't care about how this person across the street is doing. They don't care that this person is being neglected. It's been so desensitized with the fear mongering and the movies and all this crap. Yeah, you don't know what's real anymore. They don't know what's real anymore. Yeah. And at this point, it's like, what am, what am I going to do about it? Let me just have a good time. Let me take my state state sponsored drugs. Let me take my let me drink my stuff and let me just zone out and numb to the core. Absolutely. And, yeah, and we're in a numbing world, and all the opiate addictions, all the drugs, yeah. they all go directly into that. And, 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 and that triggered me to want to share something about drugs. You know, there's so much research on how dangerous medical drugs are. And yes, yeah, certainly they do help with certain things. And it's, drugs are a tool. I, you know, as I've said on previous podcasts, my philosophy is there's no such thing as a bad drug or a bad exercise, only an incorrectly prescribed drug or exercise. 
Now, of course, there's drugs that shouldn't even be on the market because they're just there for the wrong reasons and, and they're not effective and they're damaging. and Manufactured. Yeah, yeah. It, you know, it, it's it's a marketing, it's a money-making gimmick, but uh, like statin drugs, for example. But, um, My God, statins. Uh, the, the thing that your comment on all the drugs triggered me was, as a therapist, I tell my students, I say, look, there, there's, there's different kinds of people in the world. And one of the kinds of people are the people that aren't willing to engage their challenge, their healing challenge. And those people, drugs are for, right? Like if, if you've got a headache, but you're too lazy to drink more water, or you're too lazy to go see a chiropractor or a massage therapist or whatever, then aspirin's for you. You can just block it out. Just block it out and ignore it, and you know, put, put scotch tape over. Put scotch tape over yeah. the oil light and hope the hell your engine doesn't fry. So, you know, the point that I'm making is everything boils down to choices, and you can't make an effective choice without awareness. You have to be aware of what your choices are and what the ramifications of the choice are, which means you have to be conscious before you can make an effective choice. So. The reality of it is that the situation that we're in right now is the result of the individual and collective choices that we're making. And what is a culture? Arnold Mandel defines a culture as a bunch of people doing the same things, right? So if you go to Mexico, you're going to see a bunch of people doing similar things. You go to the United States, it's a different culture. They'll be doing similar things, watching football, drinking beer, uh, drag racing and we call it past playing times. baseball and yeah. eating pie and uh, building stuff or right. whatever, right? You know, yeah. uh, you go to Japan; it's a different culture. But we're we're in the situation that we're in because of the collective choices that we've made, which boils down to a bunch of individual choices. And one of your questions that you uh, you know bullet points that you shared that you'd like to talk about was. Um, the importance of health and and that navigating you you said navigating this modern world through uh, and navigating the modern world and why our health should be at the apex of our priority right and so we have to say well what is health like that most people don't think about that i think about it every day well, what do you think health is? I think health is awareness of how your body works, first mm -hmm. and foremost. That's important. Right? What does a liver do? Mm -hmm. Right? How does uh, food rot in the bowels, eventually make it to the liver, then the gallbladder, then the portal vein, into the kidney, destroys the kidney, the pH goes off, bacteria, pathogens, viruses start to spark. All of a sudden, it hits the lungs where we're supposed to off-gas toxins. It gets overwhelmed. From there, it goes to the lymphatic system, brain, heart. All of a sudden, you're in a disease span. Mm -hmm. I think it's the lack of education of understanding the fundamental aspects of how the human body works. Which has been hijacked by the medical system. Well, it's been hijacked. It's been, dis it's been disillusioned. And it's been removed from the conscious. It's and also been compartmentalized to the point that people can study health for their whole life and never know how these systems interact together. Like most of the allopathic medicine doctors that yes. are around today. And it's very, very uh, frightening and shocking, but it also leads you to the data and why we are dying of all of these different, you know, basically degenerative diseases and having strong, strong, crazy cognitive issues at, at very early ages. See, our approach to health is exactly the approach a mechanic takes to a machine. If this part's broken, replace it. If that's not working, then manipulate it with a chemical. So the 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 if if you study anatomy, which I spent a lot of my life doing, you'll see, for example, you can find out what the origin insertion of a biceps is, but you'll very find very few books that'll tell you how the biceps interacts with the anterior deltoid, with the sternocleidomastoid, with the neck extensors, with the pelvic floor with the flexors of the feet, the quads, et cetera. The whole down to the foot. Right. The, yeah. But, but, but the, the point I'm making is um, an endocrinologist doesn't know much about diet. An orthopedic surgeon doesn't know much about exercise. Um, a nutritionist doesn't know much about food, unfortunately. Absolutely. Right? Or farming. I mean, how can you be a nutritionist and not understand the mechanics of the soil? To me, that's, that is like being a heart surgeon that doesn't understand um, 
that doesn't understand uh, emotions. <laughs> who thinks the heart is just there to pump blood? <laughs> yes. Who thinks it's a pump? <laughs> yeah, thinks it's a pump. Right. right. Exactly. You know, so uh, we have to have a revival of the education, which goes back to what I was saying with you earlier. What we need to do is have education on the things that matter. We've got to have education on how the oceans and the rivers and the streams and the water cycles function, yes. the hydrological cycle. We've got to have education on how the soil works, what the microorganisms do, um, how sunlight interacts with the soil, how the minerals work with the soil. Diversity. Diversity across the board. Like If you study Confucius and, and, and the era that Confucius was in, those people had to study art, they had to study calligraphy, they studied um, history, they studied all the, the what they called a classical education. So they got a very well-rounded education. And Chinese education was really based on how nature functions. Chinese medicine is based on how nature functions. Um, we are, we're actually a direct representation of our seasons. That's Chinese medicine. Yes. And s similar with Ayurveda, but even a little bit more specific in terms of detoxification and, and all, how our body regulates. All the cycles inside yes. of us are yeah. timed with something outside right. of us, right? right? The circadian cycle. Yes. The lunar cycle, the yes. menstrual cycle, the annual cycle. Um, you know, we could go on and on, but everything inside of us is really driven by and linked to something outside of us, which means there really isn't much of an inside or an outside at the end of the day. No, they're completely one. Yeah. Yeah, they're completely right? one. So, and, and this is discussed really with the Cartesian concept of the inner world and the outer world, the cognition of the outer versus the inner, but really that creates a split where we actually think the inner is different from the outer, but you're eating, drinking, breathing, and constantly permeable to the outer world. But the, the point I'm driving at is that if we had more of an education of the basic things that we can do, like what happens if you're dehydrated? Well, 1% dehydration in the central nervous system can cause significant psychological disorders, but I don't know of any patient yet that's ever gone to a psychiatrist and had them say, how much water are you drinking, right? <laughs> right. Just never happens. So we have to somehow get back to a peasant education, a common sense education. And interestingly, in the Bible, it says the meek shall inherit the earth. Who are the meek? The peasants, peasants. the yes. farmers, yes. the people close to the earth. What does the Hopi prophecy say? We're going to come to a point with technology where if we don't get back to the earth, then it's going to come to an end. But become get, the technology will become obsolete. Well, we with, will be yeah. obsolete. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're, we're heading that direction. Mm -hmm. I think it's, I, I, I think you're familiar with orthomolecular nutrition. Of course, yes. Yeah. And, and I, I find that to be the foundation of my awareness in terms of health and how I pr approach nutrition. It's really understanding what have we lost over the last 150 years through the industrial revolution? What part of nature in terms of the soil, in terms of the biotics, in terms of the minerals, in terms of all the different specific microbes and bacteria strains that are operating within our bodies, the, 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 the ability for the body to turn something into another thing. This is because we're all alchemists, right? Yes. We're alchemists with energy. We're alchemists mm -hmm. with our thoughts. We're alchemists with food but we've lost the ability, ability to alchemize food properly mm. and yeah. we and we, you and I can talk about that food's not even food today no but but even getting deeper than that our bodies are not operating like bodies anymore no. and we're just masking and masking and we're filling up the toxic load higher and higher and higher and I I like David Sinclair's work about the, the health span and the disease span and that aging is the number one cause of death right? And that's a very interesting perspective. You compare someone who's been smoking cigarettes for 20 years and he's got a, I think the, the rate is maybe about a 700% higher chance of developing lung cancer. And the person who's 70 years old has a 20,000% chance of higher of, of getting emphysema or lung disease. Well, what does that mean? That means that our bodies are degenerating at a rate, mm -hmm. but because of the lack of nutrition, because of the lack of awareness, because of our lack of not knowing any exercise. of the things, exercise, movement, circadian rest. rhythm, grounding to the earth, real rest, real rest rejuvenation, all of those things, that span of degeneration is shortening yes. and we're getting there faster and faster and faster. And that's why people are addicted to coffee. That's why people are addicted to certain things. And I'm not against coffee. I'm against no. the intention behind coffee. I'm against the intention of doing anything. I'm, I'm against the, I'm against the movement of doing anything without intention. Yeah. And I think, you know, 
personally, we just have to start going back to the basics. You do a good job of that. That's another reason why I like what you're what you're talking about. And it doesn't have to be so complicated. Some of the things that I'm doing with Symbiotica are, um, you know, they get into specifics, and we're getting into specific antioxidants and nutritions and peptides and all these things. These these are all great, but none of that means anything if the fundamentals are not there. No, because yep. everything that you have to do to make a real good product requires a real good product, which has to come from organically farmed soils or untouched soils. And so um, with intention. Right. You you know, you can't make chicken sit a chicken shit a uh, chicken salad out of chicken shit unless you're <laughs> Mother Earth. Anyone else can't do it. In other words, you can't make something good out of junk, right? You can't take bad food and make good food out of it. It just doesn't work. You can't make good medicine out of bad food or bad resources. We're, we're combining terrible foods and the t- terrible philosophy of food with a society and an environment that's getting overly toxic. So, so both of those meteors are going at the same direction. Yeah. And that meteor is basically death, cellular death, mm-hmm. where the heart stops beating and you're, you're filled with acidity, molecular acidosis, the whole body's falling apart. So, so not only are we not eating real stuff, we're not thinking real stuff, we're getting bombarded by every environmental toxin you can ever imagine. There's never been a time more important to take your nutrition seriously and take your detoxification seriously mm-hmm. and take your rejuvenation system seriously. The, the first seriously. step to detoxification is to eat real food. Absolutely. Because yep. until you have real food, you don't have nutrition on board. And even if you're getting stuff in pills, I hate to say it, boys and girls, but the complexity of nutrition from nature is far, far, far beyond anything you can get out of a pill bottle. Absolutely. Right? 100%. You, you, ascorbic yeah. acid is not... Um, acerola cherries, right? There's a big difference. And, and so what that means is you have to start protecting the resources. And, uh, you know, this all began with the discussion of education, then we got into drugs. And so I think, I think the big education that's missing is what are the natural, simple things that we can do and should be doing regularly in order to give our body the foundation that it needs so that if we end up in a situation where we are in pain or we're um, in some kind of a crisis and the things that we know generally work don't work, then we have to say, okay, the, the Hippocratic Oath is first do no harm. If I've tried the exercise, I've tried the breathing, I've tried the stretching, I've tried joint mobilization, um, I've tried sleep, I've tried massage therapy, I've tried chiropractic, I've tried Feldenkrais, I've tried Alexander, I've tried, um, you know. Every technology, Whatever I can do that's non-invasive and realistic. And then you say, okay, what's the severity, right? I've worked with patients that are in so much pain. If I was in as much pain as them, I would use drugs. You know, I've been in pain. I remember... Uh, when I broke my left leg in five places cliff diving, the pain was intense. And so the nurse would give me morphine when I was in the hospital for several days because it was quite a bad compound fracture and I had to I had to do surgery and I had to be in there for five or six days. But I would wake up at two o'clock in the morning or something and the pain in my leg was freaking intense. And I would ring the bell and say to the nurse, I need some more morphine. And, you know, and it was just amazing, right? Yeah. And, you know, you see, morphine's been used in battlefields forever because certain things are just too painful to have to deal with uh, for any period of time. That's when you're supposed to use drugs, right? Absolutely. You don't use drugs because you got pimples. You say, well, shit, I'm poisoning my body. What am I going to do to take the poison out of my body so I don't keep having bad skin? Covering it up with some steroid cream is just sealing the poison in. Well, you're having pimples because your body's pushing out to, bacteria and can't detox. Eat it. And yeah, yeah. your body's pushing it out. Um, yeah, I think what you just said, getting back to the roots. Just the basics. You know? Yeah, right? get just to the, the basics. basics. Like Dr. Seuss education. Um, what, do you, what kind of water are you drinking? You know, I, I drink, you know, oh, you're asking me? Or you, no, I'm, the, I'm the just question, speaking yeah. generally. Yeah. What kind of water are you drinking? Are you are you hydrated? When you think yeah. you're hungry, maybe you're thirsty. And what is good water? What is good water? Yeah. You know, and, is, and, and once you realize what good water is, you have to ask the next question, how much of is, is there? Well, only 1% of the water on this planet is drinkable by human beings. Okay. There's a lot of water on the planet. 
and only 1% of it is drinkable by human beings. You know what that means to me, Paul Check, a ninth grade educated farm boy? You better fucking protect the 1%. What are we doing? Dumping fucking chemicals into it 24 7 from corporations, dumping crap, dumping chemicals, poisoning Fra- the shit out of fracking. it. Fracking. Fracking is destroyed. I don't know how many natural springs in North America. It's a, it's a very disgusting number. Oh my God. I, and I don't bring and it up. while COVID yeah. was yeah. going on, Donald Trump was using the opportunity to remove the protection off major land resources that were nature preserves. Yeah. So that they could frack and drill on them. We're, we're in absurd times. It's you know, crazy. Our, our priorities are completely been removed from our obligation as stewards of this land. Yes. Yeah. Human beings have been given the 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 wherewithal and the and the reason to become the stewards, and yeah. we've dominated the species and we've put ourselves above every species on this earth, including yeah. the fundamental energies of water and soil and our environment and, and our the plants. use of sun technology. Use- like we can do a lot with solar power. That would save the planet all the stress of of uh, hydrocarbons and and oil, right? Of Implo- fo- yeah, you're talking about explosionary energy. Yeah, I'm talking Burn- about fossil fuels. Yeah, burning right? burning oil, burning coal. Solar solar power yeah, is way more efficient. Yeah. It's not perfect, and there and, and there's. I mean, I don't want to go into a long discussion of free energy technologies because it would be. Uh, another that's that's a whole other topic. Yeah. yeah. But the reality of it is we have a lot of viable solutions. It's just that people that have an investment in making money off the pathological systems we have don't want to let go of them and they're willing to defend them and they're willing to brainwash you into thinking they're safe. And that's why they hire spin doctors. You know, like I remember after the Exxon Valdez oil spill, they would show commercials on television with a bird covered in oil. And it would say something like um, Exxon, cleaning up the environment. I'm like, yeah, but you forgot to tell them who's the one that put the oil on the damn bird in the first place. It, it's it's really an, an atrocity, a, a theater of atrocities we're dealing with. Yeah, it's illusions, right? I, the whole world's become Hollywood. It's, it's Hollywood. I, I think what you want to do is you want to look yourself in the mirror. Yeah. And you want to get fucking real. And, and start say look, I love you. Say I love you and and give your... Give your body and mind a shot in this life. And and yeah. what I mean is, is start evaluating and use practical discernment, not judgment, not yeah. based on fear. Take a look at your life. Look at the last 90 days. Evaluate your life, how you wake up on the rise, mm-hmm. what your rituals are, what your intention is every day. What kind of water are you putting in your body? Mm-hmm. Are you adding sea salt to your water? Are you doing a little bit of lemon citrus to get the liver going? Mm-hmm. What time did you go to sleep the night before? Were you did you fall asleep every night watching TV? Have you read Paul Check's book, How to Eat Movie have, Healthy? Which have you read you to do every one of those e- things? Exactly. Have you read Paul Check's book? You know, that all of these things. It takes momentum to get into a direction. It's not going to happen overnight. But let me tell you something. When you start doing one thing, it leads to number two. Sure, because you yeah. get good results. From you it. get good results and you feel good about yeah. it. And, and it gives you the energy to do the next thing. Absolutely. And it, it, you don't have to be flying to Switzerland to doing 2 billion stem cells. You, you know, Maybe you get to that one point. But the fundamental is right there. Yeah. Drink, drink clean water. You know. Understand where that water comes from. Bathe in clean water. Get a shower filter if you're just bathing in municipal water. It's worse than anything. You, at least when you drink toxic water, you have a liver and you have a kidney. Mm-hmm. When you're bathing in toxic water, you're breathing in all those vapors, all those hydrocarbons, all those you know, tr- you know, trimethyl ha- ha- halides. All those things are coming into your system. Sixty percent of the chlorine in water goes right through your skin. To just think about that. When chlorine interacts with an organic species in the body, it turns into a, a super carcinogenic compound not only that yeah. it's it's designed to kill bacteria so yeah. and you're all and you're made of bacteria yeah. like, well, let's just drink this chlorinated water that's Fun- a great idea fundamental basics you know where are you eating your food are you eating food every two hours are you giving your body some time to to process you know the the, the, the main cultures are always fasting doing things like that you know i live a life where i'm eating about a meal and a half a day that works for me mm-hmm. i'm not telling you that's what you're supposed to be doing but i like going into mm-hmm. autophagy I like allowing my body to rejuvenate. I feel mm-hmm. good. I don't always need food in my gut and I don't don't need that dopamine hit and all those different neurotransmitters from eating food. And when I eat food, I'm present. Mm. And mastification which has been mastication. Comp- ma- yeah, I call it mastification. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Ma- 
mastication, chewing your food, yeah. so critical. Are you drinking sodas while you're while you're eating food? Are you drinking cold beverages while you're eating food? Are you diluting your hydrochloride? Or are you sending text messages, watching television? Right? You're not. If people that are doing that aren't even present with the experience of bringing <laughs> life into their body, that's that's unbelievable. You, know, you might as well just be eating plastic. You wouldn't know the difference. What right? the, yeah, food is life force. Yeah. You're taking the force of the food mm -hmm. and your bodies are replicating with that force. Now, do you want it coming from a, a farm that the, the, the farmer has put his love into it, yep. has put his love into the soil? Let me tell you, when we go to our farm in the North Shore of Kauai, mm -hmm. we have a biodynamic farm out there. Mm -hmm. I go there, all I do is eat the food on the land. After 30 days there, I'm in a completely different conscious state. Oh, yeah, yeah. My, my, my entire perspective, my mm -hmm. skin, my eyes. You're tuned my, into the environment. I am the environment. Sure I've taken are. on its entire force. You've it's, eaten its genes. I've eaten its genes, and I'm and I'm 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 speaking in its tongue. I've yeah. become a representation of it. Yes. Now, now look. And then you want to protect it. Oh, my empathy level has gone through the roof. Yeah. I'm feeling more. My my heart is in more. I'm thinking way more before I'm talking. I'm mm. listening more. Mm. I, I'm not so quick to want to debate. These are things that you know come with human nature. We're designed that way. All these court case TV shows and the drama and and the competition. You yeah. know, it, it's just taken us out of our element and our flow. Yeah. And and. Getting getting the proper food and diet and nutrition will take you to places that you haven't been before. And and this isn't a matter of you, you don't need to do a big ayahuasca ceremony. Just get your food right. Get your food right and you'll see revelations coming upon you in ways that you can't even comprehend. If most people just paid attention to their dreams and wrote them down and actually spent some time asking themselves, what does this mean? And finding people that know what how to work with dreams they would be getting in a slow, consistent uh, drip feed what ayahuasca gives you in a flood in six hours. Absolutely. You know? Tryptophan turns into DMT, and it's trickling into your, your entire system as you sleep. Yeah, and but you're, and you're getting that you're, you're getting that secret sauce, and it's what, it's, you know, it could be a wizard on your shoulder just giving you a little peekaboo every single time. I, I like how you ordered that. I'm just saying that the psyche is always <laughs> talking to us, but when you get so distracted, you got to have your head blown off in order to get a message. You should really look at what you're doing because you are probably not going to be open enough and conscious enough to really take advantage of the ayahuasca or take advantage of the plant medicine because when you get open to that degree, if you're not ready for it, it's as though you're drowning in yourself. But if you pay attention to your thoughts, your feelings, your emotionships, your dreams, your fantasies, your daydreams, and your body's reactions, and your relationships, and what makes you feel happy, what makes you feel scared, you're getting everything that a great shamanic ceremony is going to give you except you're going to get it in an environment where you don't have to deal with the overwhelm or the insecurity of whether or not the person guiding you is really qualified and you may not have to deal with all sorts of people screaming vomiting shitting and freaking <laughs> out all around you which can be another experience all by itself v very well said and and what what you're what he's talking about is building your faculties and building the tools so you can adapt to everyday life and you can remove the addictions and not be a slave to those addictions mm -hmm. and what that reminds me of it's a segue into is you know i i had um journeyed into the the toad medicine the buffalo various toad medicine about 5 years ago my God, I mean, that, that put me into uh, an altered state of reality where everything was falling apart in my life where I th was holding on so tight. Things that I, I believe to be the most real and the most main part of my existence didn't matter anymore. And from there, I was able to build more and more inner development. Is that the burn? No, that's combo frog medicine. 5-MeO, oh, yeah, 5-methylhydroxydimethyltryptamine. Yeah. Oh, oh I know, well, I know what 5-MeO is. Uh, I just forgot the name of the toad was Bufo. Bufo alvarius. But it's also there's 14 Colorado other compounds. Toad. It's the Colorado River toad. Oh, is it the Colorado it, River toad? Yeah, because I've always known it as the Colorado River toad. It's the Sonoran Desert toad. There's many yeah. names for of it, and it's the it's the medicine that I quasi serve here and there to some interesting people. And 
and that it was interesting. I was I was able to die in that experience, come back and reevaluate my entire experience. That's and what those are for. That's exactly what they're for. And I was lighter. I was more. All uh, the variations of DMT give you that opportunity. Absolutely. <laughs> even the synthetic ones. <laughs> even the synthetic ones. I mean, it's 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 hitting the same uh, synapses yeah, and, and receptor yeah. sites, and and your body, you know, goes into a state of where it's thinking death is coming, and the, yeah. and the false ego dies. And, and yeah. let me just say this i i had a experience when i was i was picking white divinorum sage in laguna beach mm -hmm. and uh this was a couple of days before me and my dad were supposed to head to oregon to buy a hemp farm oh wow outside of ashland yeah i had made the decision in 2017 that i was going to go live the next 20 30 years with my dad up in oregon i was leaving my brokerage behind and i was leaving everything behind and that's all i wanted to do at that hemp point hemp is a great solution for a lot of the world well it problems. remediates the soil and it's such a it, it uses you can use it for everything you I can mean, use it uh, for wood you can use it for clothing you can use it for shit uh, in my you can make plastics with it, with it i mean there's so it's, it's wild it's it's unbelievable but it's, uh, in my, if you i don't know if i've ever shown you my healing herb course no oh it's 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 all about the history of marijuana the uses did you say herb Herb. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> that's a Canadian thing, right? Well, I don't know. I'm, we, uh, yeah. I was. I don't. I, I, I had to throw that in there. That, that's a side joke that some of my friends do. Some say herb, and some say herbs. Yeah, or not, <laughs> some either herbs. So, so yes, you're right. One of the most diverse mother plants in the world. What a creation. Yeah. And it's been perverted, just like tobacco has been perverted. Totally. But the point I was gonna get to is that. In my course, which I put together with Phil Delaire, a level four check practitioner, a very smart guy, um, we actually show the history and how one of the reasons marijuana was created the the scarecrow as a you know a dangerous drug was because it was a threat to big industry. Of course, it was. It had nothing to do with how how uh, good or bad it was for you it was it was there's a huge threat to big industry just like so many other psychedelic medicines but i would yeah. much rather harvest marijuana than trees for god's sakes yeah absolutely their growth rate the cycles the what it does to the soil i mean it's it's, it's, it's like unbelievable it's like the golden goose i don't know if any of you listening have listened to my podcast with um uh i think it's alicia rose She's an expert in marijuana. It's very good. I'll definitely take a listen to that. Yeah, Alicia Rose. Very, very good. So I'm in Laguna Beach picking white sage, and all of a sudden, something pricks me on my finger right here, on my right index finger. I pull my finger back. I look back, and there's two blood marks. Uh -oh. And all of a sudden, I heard... Oh, after the bite. <laughs> right after the bite. Usually, they give you a warning. No warning, because I pad my hand in that sage. Yeah. It's, it's, divinorum sage is tough, so yeah. you twist it. And I stepped back and I, I looked in there and sure enough was a juvenile rattlesnake smiling at me. And I've, I, I'm familiar with snakes. I have pythons. I know. I've, yeah, I've, you've, I know you've seen them. Love of snakes. Love I, of, I know that's not the only time you've been bitten too. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> and I, I, I realized this is a hemotoxin. Uh -huh. And the blood, th th this poison specific to stop your blood from coagulating. Mm -hmm. And I also knew that I got bit in the hand by a juvenile, which is more dangerous for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's a juvenile, so it's possibly dumped its load. It doesn't have that maturity. Yeah. And I also got bit close to my heart. Yes. Right. And so what I did was I immediately, and, and if I hadn't gone through those ceremonies and those experiences, I would have immediately gone from parasympathetic to sympathetic yeah, yeah. and adrenalized that entire hemotoxin to my Spend brain. Everything up. Yeah. Everything. I sat there, I went into complete Qigong meditation, slowed my heart to a crawl. And really got an understanding of what this experience is. And I imagine that this rattlesnake was an ancient, you know, sage or an ancient wizard. Mm -hmm. And it was giving me something that I needed at that time. Mm -hmm. And it was through that process that I think it really put me in a position to make a full recovery and be, be able to go through that process of initiation to the best of my ability and aware. How That's, long was it before you got to the hospital? It was about 40 minutes later, I arrived at Hogue Hospital. And by the time I had arrived there, my hand was a grapefruit. Wow. My, I'll show you photos. It's, it, it was a very intense experience. And the whole hospital, everyone was there waiting for me. They hadn't had a rattlesnake bite in a long time. Uh -huh. And I was in full like you know, Krishna perspective and yeah. just meditating and breathing through it. But that was a, that was a very interesting experience. 
and it shows you because not every day you're going to get bit by a rattlesnake, but someone's going to cross, you know, cut you off on the road, or or there, there might be someone that means you harm, or yeah. or something's going to happen, and. It's these tools, mm -hmm. you know, it's these experiences that allows you to flow with ease and grace. Mm -hmm. And so you're not- Centering yourself. You're centering yourself. So you're not breaking. Mm -hmm. and, and, and all of this goes back to our awareness. It goes back to our food. It goes back to, you know, our empathy and our ability to learn and our ability to be in a sovereign state mm -hmm. where we can approach life where it's not, where, where we're not you know, snapping at the moment. And and that is a key fundamental faculty that I believe has been lost because yeah. most people cannot handle those levels of stress. No. Anyone that heard heard my story that didn't have this type of training or these types of practices or comes from the fundamental background that I have lost their shit. Yeah. You got people that they would have they would have foamed at the mouth and 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 God knows what could have happened in that experience. Yeah, well they might not have made it to the hospital. They might not have made it to the hospital. They might have made ir irrational decisions. You know, there, there's so many things. Cuz the, the rattlesnake eventually will paralyze your diaphragm, won't it? Of course, yeah. you stop breathing. Yeah. There's so many things that can happen. You can have an allergic response. You remember you can, my friend uh, Donald Schultz I introduced you to? Dude, I loved so Donald Schultz came over to my house. Yeah. I've caught multiple rattlesnakes since that experience. Yeah. Yeah. That I mean, literally almost to the day, the one-year ceremony, we did a whole rattlesnake ceremony because, you know, Native American tradition, you get bit by a rattlesnake, that's a full metamorphosis shed, right? Yeah, that's, that's what they believe. It's a shamanic initiation. It's a shamanic, you know, some people burn combo frog in their, in their system, which is that mm -hmm. Amazonian peptide, pushes all the bile out. Well... You haven't tried anything until you tried rattlesnake. Let me tell you. <laughs> no, I'm not, no, yeah, yeah. I'm not telling you to do that. But what, no, what I'm, I'm not going to volunteer for that one. Sorry. Please don't. But Donald came over. I had three juvenile rattlesnakes at my house. And we had a great time. And he was telling me stories about stuff that they were doing in Africa with some of the craziest vipers and snakes. And yeah. I love that guy. That was a great uh, introduction to Well, to I him. brought him up because he's been bit, I think, what, 13 times by very yep. dangerous, like black mambas and the worst snakes in the world. He's Ever. been bit by them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's built an immune response. Yeah. I mean, that's nature's vaccine, right? That's that's how a vaccine is supposed to work. I mean, that's an antibody, right? Your body recognizes it as a foe and builds immunoglobulin and, and different things that's supposed to resist it yeah. and then allow it to flow, right? And that's that's what a vaccine is, quote unquote, supposed to be doing, you know? But we shouldn't really be doing that to kids that haven't even built an immune system yet. Well, not only that, we shouldn't be <laughs> filling them up full of mercury and aluminum and- And pig blood and, and, and fetus and- And yeah, dead shit and, and elements that some people are still trying to figure out where the hell did this come from. It's really weird stuff. And um, that, that, was a, that was a really pivotal moment in my life, Paul. I'm sure. Yeah. And, and from there, a lot of creation happened. And that's when I started going through the experience with my father. It was just the last three years of my life has brought me to here- to the, the the man that is sitting in front of you today, and it's it's not a day that doesn't go by where I'm not writing about it or thinking about it mm -hmm. and reflecting on it, and that's what shapes me to be able to do what I do today, mm -hmm. and that's what gives me the energy and the you know the 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 fierceness of being a freedom fighter in this world. Yeah, that's what we all have to start becoming. You know, yeah. as we were talking about on the break the biggest threat we're facing that's far bigger than anything in the media is the loss of our freedom of speech because now it means our constitutional rights. We're losing two key things right now, the sovereignty of our bodies and the right to make our own choices about how we take care of ourselves and what we agree to or not agree to as far as medical interventions and things like that, which Unbelievable. is definitely supposed to be our own choice. And we're losing our freedom of speech. And that might be even worse. Well, you know, the thing is, is, well, if you lose your body, then you don't have any freedom of speech anyhow. So yeah. that's already done. And if you lose your freedom of speech, then you're really in jail. And so you have to say, okay, well, what's the point of it then? And so I, I, I really feel that now more than ever, we have to all hold hands, especially those of us that are aware and work together as a, as a human family. And I think when we realize that we all depend on every creature on this planet, there's not a single organism on this planet that isn't here for a purpose. Nature does not play dice. She doesn't um, play party tricks. Everything is here to create balance, to create it's, order. It's, it's an amazing yeah. fabric yeah. of life, right? Yeah. It's the fabric of life. And 
<clears throat> you know, the mosquitoes, the centipedes, the sharks. bats, the sharks, they're all so critical that bacteria we yeah everything. everything i mean in the whole medical model the 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 whole germ theory is so outdated and so wrong it's just like talk about maintaining a, a bad idea Don't for big profit Don't it's just unbelievable i mean that's been so proven wrong so many times by so many scientists but the thing is is that people are so conditioned and i think that's what the beauty of what we're going through right now it's do you think we're in a renaissance? I, I do. I think we're in a, a myth transition. I think we're in a mythical transition. Whenever myth transition comes, it's a dangerous, dangerous period because it means, you know, the myth is the story that you tell yourself to try to create meaning where you can't create meaning out of a mystery. Like, for example, even if you're a ardent, hardcore scientific materialist, then you come face to face with this one problem. Nobody knows what caused the Big Bang. So you can be into classical physics or even the modern cosmology, but you have to realize that entire edifice of knowledge is built on a mystery that's no more objective than religion itself. It's all theory. It's all theory. Yeah. And it's just a theory. And there's yeah. many other very good theories. Absolutely. And Itzhak Bentov in his book, Stalking the Wild Pendulum, said Great book. The, the Big Bang is, is wrong. It's a continuous bang. It's just one of an infinite series of bangs. Yeah, it's not one event. There's no, no. one all be all. No, it's, it's ever there's no, it's an ever evolving ecosystem. There's no life. alpha omega. Yeah. It's a per yeah. perpetual cycle. But uh the the thing that I was I think I'm what I'm trying to drive at here is that we're in a transition you know we we're in a capitalist myth and we're in a consumerist myth and those two are like two sides of a coin but that myth is based on the idea that the earth is just a physical thing and that we can do whatever we want with it it's ours and we to, can repair it whenever we want it's ours to conquer yeah. and there's no consequences to it it's not a myth of life because the scientific materialist paradigm does not really support the interrelationships that make life work. Right. It's a reductionist concept. It's yeah. a reductionist ideology. If you want to see how something works, you take it to pieces. Well, look, I get, I'll get. i show you how dangerous that is. If you take hydrogen and oxygen apart to see how it works, you lose wetness. The instant that you take hydrogen and oxygen, H2O, into its component parts, you no longer have wetness. So what you see is wetness is an emergent property of that relationship. Well, life is an emergent property of the relationships that exist in nature, not in a laboratory, and not in an anatomy book, or not in a, uh, a book on... Um, uh, you know, how anything comes to pieces and goes back together again, because those books don't tell you what is the intelligence that created it in the first place, what's the intelligence that sustains it, what's the intelligence that makes it heal, and what's the intelligence that makes it grow. Right. They remove the concept that nature has a purpose and that nature has a mind and it's alive. They remove yeah. the soul and leave you with matter. Yeah, exactly. But matter yeah. cannot organize itself. And it's not working for us today. No. And, it, and it's it's catapulted us into um, an age of disease and sickness and war and yeah. consumerism, which is the fabric of the American economy. And it's a fabric of multiple economies. The, yeah. the, I, I cannot overemphasize the importance for everyone listening to get Von Donashiva's book, Oneness Versus the One Percent. It is one of the most important books you'll ever read or listen to. It's on Audible. Uh, I think it's on um, Audible. Yeah, you can get it at Audible. Oneness Versus the One Percent, Von Donashiva, and her, I think it's her daughter is another person named Shiva, so I suspect it's her daughter. Um, but she shows us exactly who the one percent are, the billionaires, what they're doing, what their belief system. She shows it's clear scientific materialism. They have no respect for the planet. They think it's just a, a resource they can turn into a commodity. They're happy to do anything to brainwash and convince people to get their way. 
with drugs, with poisons, with chemicals, uh, you know, the whole concept of getting rid of real food and wiping out farmers to commercialize food, to use the genetically modified crops. And I mean, the list is very, very, very long, but she does a dissection on Bill Gates and company like I've never seen, but she is a very skilled farmer, a very deep understanding of life and spirituality. She's a deep student of Gandhi's teachings. And she really gives some excellent viable solutions for how we can get out of this whole situation. But it really means we have to go back to living in awareness of our unity with the planet. And as you said earlier, she's our mother and we need to become more educated as to how the planet works and how it relates to us and how by tinkering with natural systems, what we're doing to ourselves and to nature. And I think when we come to realize that the, my, my conclusion, you know, when people ask me on podcasts, what's the solution? My feeling is that we've got to go back to a smaller local economy a barter system so that we put value back into what we trade. Because right now money has got illusory value. It does you don't really know what it's worth. There's no set worth to it. Right. Yeah, com- and it can yeah. change in a minute, right? It, 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 and it is changing in a minute. Yes. And if we are in a barter system, then you put value to what you're producing. Right. And, and then that what does that mean? That means that you care about what you have to create. Right. Because yeah. your purchase power depends on the quality of your product. <laughs> exactly. Right? You're you're you can't lie to people. Yeah. You can't manipulate people. If yeah. I trade then you, you'll starve. If I trade you carpentry for your milk and your milk's lousy, I'm not going to finish your house. And if your carpentry sucks, then I'm not going to get your milk. You're not getting any, you know, non-hormone raw milk. So we have to be genuine with each other at that level. And in order for us to so feed so accountability, right? Accountability, yeah, right, right. honesty, adult relationships, shake hands and mean it. Yeah. Like your life depends upon it. And that brings us back in touch. So if we go to small community systems where we use solar power instead of large grid systems where we pay tons of money for power, which is ridiculous, we produce our own food, we protect our water wells in our own local area. That way, what happens is we have food, we have services, we have water, we have power. We can keep ourselves warm. We can power our own equipment. So imagine instead of state governments, if we had what would be the equivalent of, say, a township that ruled its own township, and then there was maybe a county structure that dealt with issues of trading between um, uh, small rural areas or small little townships. So we can create sort of a Russian doll effect, which is kind of like what the democratic government was supposed to do. That's what it's supposed to do. (laughs) But the difference is, is we won't have five corporations owning and controlling 90% of the food supply like we do now, right? We won't have uh, six billionaires controlling the whole planet. We won't have just a few companies controlling all the power supply. What we'll have is a much safer, much more um, dynamic system. So let's say an earth event happens like a massive earthquake or a tornado or something that, you know, wipes out millions of people. Well, then all around those people, there will be power. All around those people, there will be food. All around those people. Yes. Self-contained. So what happens, it becomes more like an organism and each little township becomes like a cell in a body, and when the if you get injured in your chest, say someone stabs you with a knife, the surrounding cells bring nutrition, they bring blood. You have this influx of immune and nutrition and circulation and detoxification. But right now, I mean, look what Synthropy. happened. Synthropy. Yeah. yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. remember what happened um, when. Uh, All the flooding happened and George Bush... Katrina. Katrina. George Bush took too long to get to people. The FEMA, the whole... Just... Yeah. Federal government trying to come over there and monopolize the whole... Some people were like five days with no food or water on the roofs of their houses or sitting on rafts and stuff. 
And and what you saw was all this bureaucracy tied it all Who's up. Who's going to pay for it? Who's yeah, going to get over yeah, there? Yeah, can we use the military for right. that? So yeah. all this sort of, that would not have happened. We would have had rapid support from people that would have had a genuine interest because you know, if you take a, let's call the, the, the flood area, we'll give it a body. We'll say it's, it's a uh, hundred square miles. Well, right around the edge of that flood area would be all sorts of communities that have everything that, that are the people equipped. there need there. Right. And they already can get right in there. Yep. But what, what happened? And they want to get right in because there. Inside because inside of there, connected. guess what? Right yeah. across that line. That's where I get my meat. That's where I get my tractor fixed. Yeah. That's where I get my haircut. That's where my doctor lives. And then you get to that line and you see just over that line is the same thing. So what happens, you have, you turn humanity into an interface with nature and we become one large living organism, which has cells, organs, glands, and systems, all that support each other and all that know they can rely upon each other because money becomes tangible goods and services. And if you don't perform, then you have to suffer the consequences of not being um, a, a pillar or a partner. You, what's or... a good word? You, you're, in other words, if you don't perform, you're a detriment to the survival of everybody else. Absolutely. So you are a cell that has to die or transform itself. So yeah, apoptosis. Yeah, yeah. you have to go into uh, yeah. apoptosis. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. I, I th- this is a form of um, reality that seems so far fetched to occur based on the current construct that we're in. Because we have, you know, countries. We have division within countries. We have system systems in place right now that have completely obliterated the opportunity for the individual to become whole. And so to go back to the beginning part of the podcast, where we, we have to develop those faculties at an early age, we yeah. got to teach children how to build. We got to teach children how to farm. We got to teach children how to grow food. We got to teach children where to source good water. We got to teach children how to, uh, how to mend a, a fractured foot. All of these things, n- n- kids are not learning today. And the generations and the generations before us have not learned them. We've lost our way. And I would say the the onset of the late 70s, 80s, 90s was probably the, the, the epitome of us going directly into the state of materialism that we're in right now. That's when the chicken with the head got, got his head cut off yeah. and was just running around like complete chaos. And that's when you had Wall Street. That's when mm-hmm. you had Madonna, the material girl. And you had all of the, 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 all of the uh, big, large corporations seeing the, p- the potential of their greed taking over. Yeah. And it's greed. It's, yeah. it, all these billionaires you're talking about, Bill Gates, all that... I think what it comes down to is just this crazy demonic ego and where they are playing God with humanity and they're looking at humanity as pawns. Yes. We're, we're, we're just, we're an ant farm to them. Yeah. I actually think, my, this is just my own opinion. I actually think that a lot of these guys like Bill Gates think that we aren't smart enough to take care of ourselves sure. and yeah. that we don't know any better. So it's as though they're... um Abraham bringing us the Ten Commandments, and oh, like Mark Zuckerberg, we we're going to decide what you can say or not say, or what you can do or not do. Now the concept- you know what the scary thing is, he's kind of right because of what they've created. Yes, what the system has spit out. The the uh, and I'm not speaking about anyone specifically. I'm just this is general. They're right. The human right now today. The average human has no idea how to do 90% of what we're talking about. No, I know. And and, I, and, and that's why. I was just going to say the <laughs> concept is good. The problem is, is it puts too much influence in the hands of people with too narrow a viewpoint because it boils down to what's Mark Zuckerberg or Bill Gates or any of these people's belief system. And it doesn't allow us to say, well, is that really the best way to go, right? But yeah. the, the the beauty of what's going on right now is we're in a, a transition point where the snake's shedding its skin and we're becoming aware of the dangers of this type of thing. We're becoming aware of the dangers of capitalism, consumerism. We're becoming aware of the dangers of corporations getting involved in government. We're becoming aware of the dangers of corporations buying out the legal system. And so at some point 
Because we, we've hit a critical mass. Yeah. Right? We've hit, the baby boomers are sick and people are getting sicker and sicker. And the young people are young, sick. Young people are sick. The suicide rates, the, I mean, the, just the, everything that's happening, people are fed up. But and, with all the so-called science, technology, and medicine we have, we should <laughs> technically be the healthiest, smartest people on the planet. Oh, my God. So there's the report card. Ah, uh, it's unbelievable. You know, like uh, when I... I, I did a, years and years of studying farming and soil science, and there's a famous British uh, farmer named Friend Sykes who was a real pioneer in the organic movement in the 40s. And uh, he's talking all the way back then about the use of chemicals for pest control. And he said, weeds are the farmer's report card. And Sir Albert Howard said the same thing. And so he's saying, well, you know, you're killing the report card. So you just keep doing shitty farming and you use more and more chemicals, which means you're doing a worse and worse job instead of paying attention to the fact that nature's guiding you. So, you know, we're in this- Blindfolded. Of, yeah, yeah. We're in this sort of transition period where those of us that are awake have the responsibility to at least offer people different viewpoints. That's all we can do. Like, I'm not here to stuff anything down anyone's throat. My podcasts are really just a mix of my opinions based on my own life experience and education. And, and that's what everybody I interview shares, just like you. That's everything that I say. Use right. Your, use your God-given discernment. Right. If something resonates, go and maybe investigate it a little bit And it's more. the same with all the people being taken off the internet for sharing the truth about how viruses work or uh, what 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 medicine, exosomes are, what, what the PCR yeah, what, test yeah, is. Yeah, what medicines work, uh, you know. And so when you start taking the wise elders and knocking them out because they go against a corporate agenda, you really set yourself up for far bigger problems than any Catastro pandemic. Ca catastrophic. Yeah, right. yeah. The, 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 the pandemic's not nearly as catastrophic as the things we're talking about. We're, we're definitely heading towards a cliff. And, you know, it's part of the, you heard of the nine point death meditation? No. Very interesting meditation. It's something I did in terms of the samadhi practice. Where you just you visualize everybody on Earth today, at some point, are going to transition. I can't wait. Uh, I would be ready to go now if it wasn't for my kids. Right, that's your karma. I got to go find an organic farm in the afterlife. <laughs> <laughs> We're on a train, and that train's not stopping till we transition. You know, the, 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 these are certain certain things. Your your body is going to slowly start to fall apart. All, all of these things. It's part of the death meditation. Mine hasn't yet. Yeah, you're you're doing great. And uh, that's what homeostasis does. You know, yeah. it brings you balance. It brings you presence. That's what good food, good sex, and a dream does too. Absolutely. And a purpose. And your purpose here is to teach and to give all of your life experiences and all of your knowledge and all of your awareness and pass it on to your students yeah. and pass it on to people like myself where I can pass it on to other people. Yeah. And we can trade stories. That's what love does. That, that's, what, that's what love does. And if that is robbed from us, we're in deep shit. We and, are. And we're already in deep shit. So anyone listening to this right now, I, 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 am, I honor your existence to the fullest. Me too. And even I, if I don't agree with you. Even if I, exactly. Even if I don't agree with you. I we, actually honor Donald Trump as much as he can drive me nutty. And I even honor <laughs> Bill Gates because they're all humans. And honestly, everybody's perspective of the world is uniquely their own. So it's not a question of, 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 um, for example, take Bill Gates. I disagree with almost everything he does and says. But that's how we put things on the table, right? That's a polarization. I would love to sit at a table with Bill Gates. I would I absolutely prefer it. love it. Because boy, would I have some very potent questions for him. And he wouldn't be able to pull his little tricks on me because I'm way too well studied and read. And I would say, okay, look, I have a question for you. And this would go on and it would be undeniable that I could back my points with good science and tons of references. And I could say, here's the statistics of what happens when people eat and live the way you live. And here's some statistics from history of what happens when people eat and live the way I do. For example, did you know that during the first and second world war, when people had no money, 50% of the food eaten was grown in people's backyards. And doctors all over the world documented that the rates of disease, illness, and common health challenges was at the all-time low. That's like one of the main beginnings of all my speeches is, is exactly that. Someone so, you knew grew their, grew their food 
and less than a quarter of 1% of the population today grow their own food. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, the 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 point is just that <laughs> what's see if I could sit or anyone like Zach Bush, I mean turn Zach Bush into a debate with Bill Gates, put me and Zach Bush and a few others at a table, um Joel Salatin and I can think of a few others and uh <laughs> it would just be something that Bill would never want on film. It won't happen. But the, here's the point that I'm driving at. You see, that's what a democracy is. That's what freedom of speech is. Bill, state your best case. Paul, state your best case. Eckhart Tolle, state, Deepak, whoever, state your best case. And then we all have the evidence on the table and we say, okay, What's the best for the collective based on everything we've shared and the evidence that we can gather? But when people start stopping you from being able to share that because it goes against their profit-driven agenda, now you have an invisible jail. And now you have someone who's acting as the emperor of the world without being voted in by the rest of us. Now you have someone that's trying to control what goes into your bodies and your children's bodies. Now you have someone that's controlling the way you educate your children, the way you use money, the way you use drugs, the way you control the resources of the planet. We're talking about the absolute utter opposite of a democracy. We're talking about the loss of our sovereignty and the loss of our freedom of speech. And that makes people like that very, very dangerous to the planet and to other people. Yes, absolutely. Well said. Aho. Great spirit. Um, I'm with you. And we're going to do everything we can to keep spreading that truth. Yes. Yeah, so do, it, do, you, do you know Bill Gates? Is the, Do you know they're now injecting Gardasil in, in boys? great idea yeah th that's happening right now yeah that, pretty that, soon they'll be injecting it into cows too yeah, and, and we'll, the taxpayers will be paying for it that kind of tyranny is happening today that's piracy of the human body oh it's it's you want to call it people use the word satanic people use the word demonic you know we're getting yeah. into sci-fi yeah this is sci-fi this is sci-fi yeah. cut loose man yeah. hollywood is is actually reincarnating itself in reality it's it's a wild ride that's kind of a method of how Hollywood act. They would put it out in films, and yeah. Then they would, and then they would start playing it out in real life. You're desensitized to it. Mm -hmm. You don't care about it, and you're just watching the score of the game. And none of that matters. And you're taking your state state sponsored drugs. You yeah. Know? You're on your welfare. You're on your different all these different programs. You've been removed of your power. That's why I, I strongly believe in in the governance of your own faculties. Again, back to what you're saying is creating your own ecosystem with your own family, with your own tribe, yeah. with your own commonwealth, and everybody self governing th themselves. You know what? One of the beautiful things, and and we'll close out with this, <laughs> not because I don't want to keep talking because I'm getting so damn hungry. I'm going to eat the table, and fortunately, we have good food here. Um, you know. Here's sort of a neat beauty. If you look at the underbelly of this, hey, Shervin, how's your business doing right now? It's doing really well. Really well. And guess what? So is mine. Why? Because I spent my whole life telling the truth to people. And I have over 15,000 students around the world, most of which are very healthy, vital people that are clear thinking and protect the Earth's resources. And enough people are aware right now that something's got to change and they're taking it into their own hands to get educated. And we are almost finished with enrollment to the Czech Academy. We've had the biggest enrollment in the history of the Institute since 1995. But here's something interesting Gavin told me, who's my CEO. Not Gavin Newsom, right? No, Gavin Jennings. <laughs> Gavin told me, I believe it was 70% of the people coming into the Czech Institute have no background in the health or allied healthcare industries at all. They're in a complete career transition and they realize they want to help people feel better. This is the, the most beautiful part of this entire experience that we're dealing with in 2020 is people got shook to their fucking core. They did and, and they woke up they to woke the up. fact, hey. My health matters. My if, immune if system If a little matters. tiny virus can take me out because I'm not taking care of myself, I yeah. better take care of myself. Absolutely. And, and, and I say if a little tiny virus. If a little tiny virus. <coughs> <If>. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, but, you know, the reality of it is, is that 
everybody that I know that has an honest health product, like buy optimizers, all the people that sponsor my podcast are doing record sales. I think that's awesome because what does that mean? More people are putting money into good education and good food and the farmer's hands that are taking care of the planet and people that are really concerned about people and engineering products that really work. I That's a good sign. Because of what's happening right now with Symbiotica, I am now driven more than ever. We are working... You got a chauffeur? I got, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm working on that too. Yeah. Um, I am now working with farms in Costa Rica, biodynamic farms. Great. We're coming out with our first biodynamic formula in January. We're combining some of the top Ayurvedic herbs that are grown in Costa Rica. It's funny you're mentioning yeah. Costa Rica because I was just talking to the girls and I said, you know, if it gets to be that California is just not a safe place to raise our kids. Costa Rica is Costa an Rica option. is it's, an it's, option that I would seriously consider. Absolutely. And, and I, and, you know, I go to Iceland, we go to Nova Scotia, we go all over the world sourcing our raw materials. I've never been so driven and motivated to bringing the absolute best formulas to the it, world right now. Yeah. And, and people are demanding it. Yeah. And they're stoked and they're educating themselves. Yeah, they're, and they're getting you, results. Yeah, and that's part of the whole process. You got to learn yeah. why we do what we do and the intention behind everything that we're doing. And this is also a rite of passage ceremony. We are going through our initiation into adulthood as a worldwide populace and as a culture. We can no longer rely on Big Daddy in the sky. We can't rely on Big Daddy in the glass buildings. We can't rely on Big Daddy Bill. We can't rely on Big Daddy Medicine. We can't rely on Big Daddy Banking. We can't rely on Big Daddy Farming. We can't rely on White Jackets. We can't rely on Priests. We are going through an initiation into taking not only responsibility for ourselves, but everything that we have to take care of in order to live healthfully and sustainably moving forward and to raise our children without autism from vaccinations and diseases and the deficits of a corporate takeover. This is, this is the time. We have to learn to it. say no. Yeah, this is it. It's not tomorrow. This is it. It's right now. Yeah, and if you're listening to this, this is it. Stare in the mirror and say, hey, which direction are you going to go? This is like, you know, blue pill, right, red pill. No, yeah, it, it, it's, it's beyond that because the information is there. It is, and it's, that's part of being an adult is yes. looking at both sides of an argument, not being caught in a belief system and ignoring the other side. If you're judging everything at face value, you're disabling your own governing dynamics of being sovereign. Yeah. Stop brooding into your childhood fear. Go into a management system and take your power back. Yes, look at both sides of every argument. You have to look at both sides. And until you do, you're not educated. Uh, exactly. You are not educated. No. Yeah, you're just running on one side. I don't care if you're even choosing the side that we agree with. Yeah. You need to look at what the opposite is saying in order to articulate the truth. I've been looking at what the opposite of my viewpoint's been saying for 59 years, and all I see is a lot of disease, a lot of ill health, um, a lot of manipulation, a lot of lies, a lot of greed, a lot of bogus science, and that's what drove me. To look at the other side. And when I saw the evidence, it was obvious. That's exactly the discernment I was taught by both my father and Avocado was let's look and see what they're saying. And is it working? Are they, is it rooted in fundamental truth? Mm -hmm. Are they providing enough research behind it? And how is it, how, how are you receiving it as a person? Yes. And then from there, Make your decision. And if it doesn't work, let's go find out what does work. And that is really exciting. I mean, that, that's, that's what I like to do. I mean, I, I love to investigate. It's part of my human design. You and know? crisis yeah. also really opens the door to creativity. Absolutely. You say, okay, we've, like, look, if you're, if you're driving your car home late at night from a party and you get a flat tire and you open the trunk, and someone forgot to put the jack handle in there, <laughs> well, then you got to get creative. Yes. You say, okay, what can we scavenge out of the bush, or do we 
wave a car down and see if they, you know you got to start thinking or you might freeze to death out there get uncomfortable hormesis yes. what does not kill you makes you stronger yes. that's why we jump in fr- freezing rivers that's and ice exactly land. right yeah, practice getting uncomfortable yeah. go in the gym and work until you're at the edge of yourself yes. not the destruction of yourself but work into a therapeutic level of discomfort i take cold showers I have not, I think I've only taken one warm shower in 16 years. Wow. I, that, that's crazier than me. I, I got to hand it to you. Well, the thing is, is that what I do is one, I just say, okay, I get out of the shower. If I take hot and I say, okay, how do I feel? And then I do cold. How do I feel? I always feel better. Now, I don't enjoy getting my ass frozen off any more than anybody does. <laughs> but to me, it's natural medicine. I'm 59 years old. I'll tell you what, I get out of that cold shower. If I take a 10 minute cold shower, it enhances my sex drive significantly. 100%. I definitely feel like I'm about 28 again. Yeah. You absolutely. know, and that is important if you got two wives. Um, and that's just the human biology. Right? Yes. And it's, it's, that, that's the same thing with our entire perspective on life and the way we navigate through everything. We got to get to adversity moments so we can build. We do. Yeah. And look, the average marriage today only lasts 2.5 years. Yeah. And the average person gets married three times in their lifetime. I say, look, work at a therapeutic level of discomfort. Be comfortable with a little healthy conflict. Deal with your own inner conflict don't feel like you got to solve it immediately, but bear witness to the story going on inside of yourself and say, hmm, who, there's a debate going on. Should I or shouldn't I? Um, will I or won't I? Or why did I? Or will I do it again? Bear witness to the fact that healthy conflict, healthy conflict in relationship means you state your viewpoints, you express your emotions, but you stay connected to the person at the heart. You do not objectify them or turn them into an enemy. You say things like, I'm really upset right now, and I really do not feel good about what happened. Nonviolent communication. Well, as yeah. much as you can be nonviolent, yeah. it takes a lot of skill to do that. Yeah. But the point is, is as long as you give a person a chance to experience your true feelings without making them feel so threatened that they can't be present with you, then you actually get to know the person that you're with. You get to see what their opinions are. You learn a lot of things about yourself because maybe they're they're upset about things that you didn't realize you were doing. But my only point is cold water is safe. <laughs> it makes you uncomfortable. You learn how to deal with a little discomfort. Exercise is safe. Um, going without food and fasting, even one day once in a while, I love to do a day fast. I used to do a lot more of them because I would do a ceremony on my fast. But there's days where I just say, okay, today I'm I'm not going to eat till dinner time. And I just take the first, I skip breakfast and lunch and I just let my body have a break. In other words, that's a safe way to deal with some discomfort. But when you're feeling really hungry, you just say to yourself, I don't really need to eat food. I know I've got enough food in my body to last for at least two weeks. So one day is no big deal. So you actually witness your body feeling hungry. You know you're in the habit of eating. But if the higher truth is you really don't need to eat food, all you got to do is drink a little water and you'll be fine. Stick to the higher truth because then you get to see what's more real for me, my condition behavior, my habits, my addictions, or my higher truth. Uh, what's absolutely. more real for me, the higher truth at exercising regularly and being honest about it? Or the lower truth, I'm too lazy right now. I don't want to get cold or I don't want to get sweaty or I don't want to make my hands hurt or whatever. All we got to do is say, what's my higher truth? What's happened anytime I followed it? And what's the lower truth and what happened whenever I follow that? And then you'll find your growth edge. My, my, uh, my greatest achievements and discoveries come in the face of adversity. I've been spending a lot of time out in Joshua Tree for the last two years since my father transitioned, going out there for three, four, five days, fasting on some certain entheogenic compounds and completely discommunicating myself from the world. My, my, my team, my, my company, they all respect that. They give me that time. And um, I come back inspired. Totally. I'm, I'm in full power. On that drive back to the coast, 
I am, my mind's going a million directions. I've developed thoughts. I've been able to go into pains that were hurting me without me knowing it in my frontal conscious. Yeah. I was able to go and explore those traumas, those wounds. Sure, yeah. And you got to be with it. You got to be with it. And 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 that is the space that we heal. Yeah. And that is a space that you can then take on other things in your life that's going to create service in your world and it's going to bring you true happiness. And right now, I think one of the most important things is being with each other. Right? Connection. We just got to be with each other. The the whole issue of what's being imposed upon us is something you have to seriously question uh, because if you look at the statistics it hasn't really helped much there's a lot of confusion as as to what's really working or not working D- we, divide and conquer has yeah, been we, happening yeah and it's it's we're in it right now of course I see we are. The, the both lines the blue and the red mm-hmm. you know and the media has perfected it oh yes it, this is this is unbearable to our mother and our yeah. mother is feeling it yeah the planet yeah. you mean yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it is but uh, the thing is is that um you know that's why i do these podcasts i'm with people when i do this podcast this is me extending myself and everything that i have is knowledge and my viewpoints and i it's not me wanting people to agree with me it's me saying let's consider each other's viewpoints and if you want to know if someone's viewpoints worth listening to ask yourself this question what has happened to the people that have applied it and i will my final statement will be this i've had many people ask me if i'm enlightened and this is what i say to the degree that you apply my teachings and it enhances your life I'm enlightened. Anything else is bullshit. And that's all I can bring to the table. I, I love the simplicity of that. Does your life get better? Does your life get Are better? Are you happier? Are your that's relationships it. better? Do yeah. you feel better in your body? Is this message and this magic working for you? If it's working for you, fantastic. I'm enlightened. And nothing that I teach people is dangerous to do. I'm not saying take dangerous shots that have never been properly researched I'm not saying there's some kind of a epidemic or pandemic that we can't even really pin down because we don't even have a test for it. I'm not saying that you should do surgery or some radical procedure. I'm not saying to fill yourself with dangerous chemicals. I'm saying get clear on what makes you happy and do it. Get enough exercise to be happy and healthy and keep your body working well. Breathe fresh air eat real food and put your money in the hands of farmers that are caring for the planet. Get enough rest to keep your head clear and your sex drive healthy so you don't lose connection with the people you should be intimate with. And when you get those basics in place, then you actually have enough basic knowledge of what works to be in a place of real discernment. Because any once you have that in place, any input is testable. Absolutely. Right? Yes. So you can bring me a product and say, Paul, this will uh, you know, give you a hard on for days and make you a sex hero. And I can try it and say, you know what? It made me feel like shit. And how do I know? Because I felt really good before I tried it. But if you give it to someone that's sick, they're not- Where's gonna, the baseline? Yeah. It might give them a hard on, <laughs> but it might give them hard on because it's manipulating them so bad that they don't notice what it's doing to the rest of their body. Absolutely. You know, so the reality of it is until we all get down to the basic practices I call the four doctor practices for at least a year to ground ourselves in health, we don't have any way to measure the influence of these things they just are it's undetectable and you're just throwing darts blindfolded it's just ideas i'm with you this the whole blindfolded dart throwing oh but i'm gonna this oh this made me feel good for a couple days do you fuck that this you're right it is at least a year yeah it may be even longer for certain people. well i'm yeah at at least a year just to get in the habit get in the habit and start feeling your body again i've worked with a lot of sick people and i've seen radical things happen in one year I tell people all the time, if you haven't applied my book, How to Eat, Move, and Be Healthy, for at least six months, honestly, then you're wasting your time and energy to come see me. Because all I'm going to do is sit right here at this beautiful glass table and read the book to you and tell you how to apply it. (laughs) Right. Because that's the first thing I got to do to help anybody get healthy. Uh Oh, 
So, hey, what a great conversation, man. You ready for some dinner? I'm so hungry. I could eat the backside out of a skunk, partner. <laughs> you don't got any stripes, do you? Uh, well, hey, hey, uh, I yeah, see how you've been you looking know, at I me. I know you've been eating all that organic food, baby. <laughs> you like my new haircut and the beard. That's probably Yes, you're you looking pretty sharp, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> that was a great conversation. Um, we we didn't talk about half the stuff we were going to talk about, but that's the beauty of, of sitting down that's with you. That's called dialogue. Yeah, yeah. And, and um, it's always an honor. And there's so many people that are excited about what's happening and what we're doing and our communication and all Ugh. that stuff. There's just a lot of momentum happening out there. And Yeah, it is exciting. Uh, it's an exciting time. You know, don't get misled by all the the things that we've shared here about how bad it is. Hey, the devil you know is better than devil you don't know. Absolutely. And now that the cards are on the table, let's get creative together. Let's have fun. Yeah, let's have fun. We can do this thing. I tell people, look. This is an analogy I give my students. There's about 7 billion people in the world. Let's say there was a worldwide water shortage. If every one of us decided to flush the toilet one less time a day, well, if you take the average toilet flushes between two and five gallons of water, depending on the style of toilet you have, let's make it easy. That's 14 billion gallons of water if we say all toilets are a two-gallon flush. And all we had to do was just let it mellow one time. I don't even pee in a toilet. <laughs> but the point, you see the point? <laughs> no, I get it. I get it. I have it's to a, say that. If each of us, <laughs> if each of the seven billion of us just do a little bit, that's a lot. That's not even the hundred monkey effect. You're just talking about a simple, I'm basic just saying, act. Yeah. Just whatever you can do to be a little kinder to the planet and to yourself, do a little bit of it each day. If we all do that, poof. Wow. Monumental energetic It'll change. It'll be wild. Yeah, absolutely. We, 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 uh, we're ready for that. Yeah. We're yearning for that. We are. We're, yeah. we're yearning for the connection. And what we need to do now is going to require a harmony of enough of us to create a, a shift. And surprisingly, I've seen statistically in my library, I don't remember which book, but it actually showed through scientific analysis that 6 million people in harmony with values and actions is more powerful than 6 billion people living in a state of chaos. Yeah, completely, 100%. So we only need a small percentage of the population to actually wake up to harmonize two values values that are sustainable. And I think, I mean, I know a lot of the people that I know, uh, you know, Rob Wolf, um, Aubrey Marcus, Kyle Kingsbury, Josh Trent, uh, all the people that I know that have holistic podcast messages are harmonizing a lot of people. And so if we just keep singing the message and giving them tangible evidence that it really works, that's why when my students come here, I say, oh, you want to train? Okay, let's go train. Let me see what you got. And I'll walk around half naked for them, not really, in a pair of shorts, so they can see, here's what a 59-year-old man looks like that's practicing this. If if we just sort of get naked together, it becomes obvious who we should be listening to and who we shouldn't be listening to. Totally agree. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, lots of love. Thanks for sharing. And thanks for making such amazing products. I love the fact that you sponsor the podcast. I love the quality of your products. Uh, and amazingly, they all taste good too, which is rare. <laughs> and so uh, I love that you're sourcing out high quality stuff and that you're putting a lot of effort into going all over the world to find the best stuff. It's an exciting time, Paul. Yeah. I appreciate it. We just opened our flagship office in La Jolla. Yeah, good. We have beautiful people that are embodied and practicing the the message of what symbiotica is, is that your body, your mind, everything deserves the best and you need to make that choice on your own. That's where we yeah. got to go. That's where we got to go. And that, that's that's our message. And Symbiotica is where we yeah. got to go worldwide. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and I'm not talking about the company. I mean the meaning the of meaning the name, of it. Right? Yeah. Symbiosis. That's Harmony. Right. Yeah. And uh, so lots of love. And uh, hey, all of you, thank you for listening. And uh, please, if you disagree with me, that's cool. And if I've given you something to think about, that's cool too. And... If you're downright upset at me, then go meditate for a while. (laughs) And um, 
if you're downright upset at me, but you haven't actually looked into the things I'm talking about, then you're brainwashed and you need to go look in the mirror and say, hmm, how come I've fallen into the trap of a belief system that's closed and I am afraid to hear opposing opinions because any belief worth living is worth challenging. And worth dying for. Hey, that's that's what an initiation ceremony is for. Absolutely. That's what a rite of passage ceremony is for. Absolutely. That's what it means to be a man or a, an adult. Is Are you willing to protect the tribe At all costs. and the resources with your life? At all costs. Because if you're not, you're a child. And we can't afford big children in the world because they're too expensive to feed and they don't produce as much as they consume. So here we are. We're all in a worldwide ceremony of moving into adulthood. And I say, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holding hands together. Yeah. Yeah. So thanks to all the sponsors. Remember, anytime you buy anything from the sponsors, you're putting money in the hands of people that share the same values that this podcast is built on. And that money goes into restoring the soil and supporting our natural resources and making the world a better, safer place for you and your children now and in the future. So thank you to the sponsors. If you love this podcast, share, share, share. If you didn't, it's our secret. <laughs> Lots of love. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Living 4D with Paul Check and today's guest, Shervin Jafaria. You can follow Shervin on Instagram at Shervin333 or at Symbiotica. As regular listeners will know, Symbiotica is one of the sponsors of this podcast, and you can get 15% of Symbiotica products by visiting symbiotica.com. That's C Y M B I O T I K A.com, and using the discount code CHECK15. That's capital C, capital H, capital E, capital K, 1 5. Follow Paul on Instagram and Twitter at Living4D Podcast or on his YouTube podcast channel, youtube.com forward slash Living4D with Paul Check. Watch more on Paul's blog at paulchecksblog.com and the Czech Institute's brand new streaming media site, chikiva.com.